Hey guys, Levi for the Rag Company, and in today's FAQ video, I'm gonna tell you about something even greater than the FAQ channel. This is gonna be a four day, basically FAQ event. That's right, from November 10th through November 13th, four hours a day for four days, two sessions a day morning, afternoon, we are inviting some of the greatest from the detailing industry right here to our studio. And you guys will be able to ask any of the questions that you want. Why? Because we will have a live chat going on and we will be having a Zoom call going on. So for those of you that wanna ask a couple questions, we will have representatives in the live chat answering those questions. For those of you that maybe just wanna watch, you can just watch. You can literally just sit and watch the show and hopefully you will learn something new and exciting about that brand. Now, if you wanna learn more about the product, maybe you wanna go a little deeper, that's where you pop onto that Zoom call with one of their representatives and you'll be able to discuss and maybe become a distributor or reseller or something like that yourself. Now, one of the great things about this event is the access you are gonna be able to get with these folks. Maybe you wanna watch Chris West and you wanna ask him some questions, you can do that. Maybe you wanna learn more about G-Technic products, you can ask Eric himself. Maybe you wanna learn a little bit more about Rupes or Coach Shemi. You can do that too, that's the greatest thing. We're even gonna be beaming in the guys from Color Lock and IK Sprayers from on the other side of the world. That's the even cooler part. And you'll be able to get the same access that we get on your computer. How awesome is that? So head on over to the Rag Company YouTube channel because that's where it's going to be happening. Where you see all the videos, little placeholders up there, it says day one, day two, day three, day four. Set a reminder for yourself. That way you'll be notified right when we start to go live and you'll be able to not miss a single moment. So we'll see you Tuesday, November 10th, and hopefully we see you through the whole thing at the Rag Company Media Access Show on the Rag Company YouTube channel. All right, hey guys, welcome back to yet another Wednesday live detailing session. We've been having fun with these the last few weeks, and uh, we thought, why not continue with this? Maybe it'll become a tradition. We'll see if the guys get tired of it. But, you know, we'll, we'll have some fun with it in the meantime. And actually, today's episode, we, uh, we had some contentious kind of figuring out what to do with this, right? Because we did two trucks. We polished some stuff. We washed some stuff. Now it's kind of like, well, it's getting cold outside. Maybe do like a winter prep thing. Maybe let's focus on some wheel cleaning. And uh, we got the guys out in the studio with uh, our cameraman Jimmy's Ford Focus. Has some really filthy wheels, some nasty looking taillights, some other things. Guys, what are we going to do today? Well, thanks for having us, Dane. Uh, Feels good exciting, to be here. Super exciting to be yeah. here. Me and Levi Gates, the master of shine, here in the TRC Media Studio with, like you said, Jimmy's Ford Focus behind us. Now, Dane has volunteered us to do more work than we <laughs> always expect to do, as usual. Right. I thought we were only cleaning wheels, but then at the last minute, he's like, guys, we're doing a full winter prep. We're going to be compounding, <laughs> polishing. We're going to be oh, hold on. on it. Oh, no. I want <laughs> headlights refinished. I promised Jimmy this thing would look like a million bucks. And yeah. you and I were like, um, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we dude. only plan, we only brought Magic Wheel Cleaner by Coach Kemi know. and Brake Buster. I know. And I haven't, so, and, and I don't think I can use this wheel cleaner on the interior. Yeah, I don't think I we don't can think either. So, so do good that. news is we're here to improvise. No, we're literally. Like Dane said, we're going to be cleaning the wheels on Jimmy's car. Yep. We may be polishing the taillights because, well, those are some aftermarket taillights that Jimmy put on there, yep. and they are starting to fade due to sun damage. So we're going to yep. get those kind of cleaned up, and, uh, and then maybe we'll uh, give it a little bath. You yeah, know, we'll wash like it that. and get it cleaned up. Get a little soak, right? Just something to kind of loosen some of the yeah. dirt up. Yeah. That's but, uh, right. We are going to be getting the car up on the lift. Uh, we're going to be taking off the wheels uh, and basically, we have this really cool, innovative tools rack over here that we it's can actually place the wheels onto. Which is pretty neat because it's actually one of their uh, hood racks. Yeah. And one of the great things about it is it's got a different option that you can buy where mm -hmm. you can get these wheel stands that 
sit yeah. on there and you can just put four wheels on there. So if you're coating them, uh, you know, maybe if you're doing refurb yeah. or something, uh, you have that capability to set them on the stands and wheel them around the shop and do all that stuff. So super excited to use that today. Uh, if you guys are looking at, into wanting to use one of those things, just go to innovativetools.com yeah. and uh, you can check it out there. Yeah, so, but very handy. Um, wheels coming off, basically we're going to be wheeling that rack into the actual wash bay over here where we're going to be pressure washing the wheels. Now, you might be wondering why would we be pressure washing the wheels and tires and not just pressure wash the whole car, yada, yada, yada. Well, we kind of want to make this more focused around wheel cleaning and show you how we would do this. Ha, and if focused. this was in the uh, Dane... You have yeah. to leave now. <laughs> that was your yeah, one you bad home. joke you that you home. were allowed, and now you have to go home. Uh, but You're yes, welcome. So a more focused approach on wheel cleaning. So we're going to bring that into there, um, and we're going to be using Koch Kemi's Magic Wheel Cleaner. Uh, we're also going to break out some Brake Buster as well. And so I uh, just kind of wanted to show you uh, just a, like a contrasting difference between these two wheel cleaners and show you how, how differently they actually clean. And so we have some brushes uh, at, with, our, with, our, uh, with our lineup as well. So we have our black uh, tire brush. We have our flag tip nylon uh, wheel and body brush. And we have our detail factory black boars here brush. So um, should be pretty fun, man. I think yeah. this is going to be a good time. And then it, once we get done, it might take two hours to clean these wheels. That's what I, I keep saying. I've been might. saying it from the start. But, you know. Hey, and who knows I was less convinced, so I insisted we add some more things to make sure we filled the time appropriately. That's right. Dane's That's like, right. Dane just started going down a checklist. He's like, what can you fit in here? Is there an <laughs> antenna cleaning? I'm like, no, Dane, nobody does that Viewers, anymore. commenters, help me out. So, Let us know anyway, what you want to see. I'm sure Dane will be like, maybe a little bit of solution. That's what Dane says on everything, right? Maybe a little solution finish there. Hey, maybe a little solution finish there. I'm like, say that. I'm, like, I'm like, Dane, stop. I think Dane stop. thinks about those days when he used to have an element, Honda element, yeah. mm. and He's how tries great it was to be able to solution finish all the cars. Shouldn't even car. be solution finish. Yeah. He's no, like, those he tires, put a little solution finish on them. Like, you're not supposed to do that. Dane does that at his house sometimes on the weekends. <laughs> oh Just put gosh. solution finish all over. Puts Dane, a little what bit the, on the heck tables, are you doing the over there? Yeah. Well, guys. It's All a, right, it's a, it's I'm cracking the whip now. <laughs> so, um, point yeah. is, you guys are going to be able to uh, send in your questions via the live chat that's going on on both face on Facebook, yeah. YouTube, and we've even got Twitch going. So, you'll be able to watch it on any of those streams. You'll be able to live comment. You can ask us questions. Dane will be moderating those questions. We'll be sending them into Anthony and I. We'll be able to answer those questions for you guys. And uh, I think it's going to be something that, that I think a lot of you are. You know, so far, I've really enjoyed. We've yeah. had a lot of fun doing these. It seems yeah. like we're a little more engaged because we get to do something than just sit at a table for yeah. a few hours. Now, Jimmy uh, apparently said all we have to do is okay. unscrew these lug nuts by hand. Oh, wow. So Yeah, which they, I don't know why, but he brought, this, and he brought this torque hmm. wrench for some reason. Oh, from our friends at Snap-on. I don't know if our friend's from Snap-on. I think our friend Jimmy <laughs> brought this. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. So forget who we've coded. I don't know why with. we need it, but so many collaborations. I was see if you wanted to just take it home, because we're not going to be uh, yeah, yeah, needing it. I'll take it. that with so, me. Yeah, you know. no, I'll just take. Okay, that. well, I'll just make sure it's here for you. We're going hand tight today. Hand tight. Literally. That's the way I like to roll, especially going into <laughs> winter. Get those lug nuts just nice and finger tight. Now I have arthritis, so my hand tight is different from your hand tight. Absolutely. So, but what you can do is with those arthritic hands, you still can raise this car, can't you? Um, well, maybe. Okay. Uh, I need a stick or a poker of some sort uh, to push this button. So if anybody's wondering, this lift is a twin bush lift uh, that we actually got through Matt at Obsessed Garage. Um, and it's been fantastic. It's been working great. And so uh, after bleeding the system, it takes a, a good half a day to bleed this thing properly. But once you get it, You'll have it nailed down. You don't have to do it again. But um, pretty fantastic, man. We've been really liking this. Raise that thing up. Go higher. Oh, it's bouncing a little bit. It's kind of scaring me. No, nah, it's fine. Jimmy's right? car's Jimmy, going to fall off the focus, lift. Right? Sorry. Sorry. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, keep going. I just want to make this easier on our backs. Right? Um, so check out these wheels. Check out how dirty these are. I'm not going to. Uh, before we do anything, before we touch them at all, I'd like you guys to actually see. They are um, legitimately dirty. They are legitimately dirty. Yeah, these wheels are gross. I'm really excited about how dirty I'm going to get trying to take these wheels off. Well, Jimmy, what it is detailing. You're working, with? <laughs> you're working with just spline lug nuts on these? Jimmy, uh, these look at are that. hand tight. What are you doing? You're driving around like this? Wow, that's terrifying. <laughs> you crazy guy, you. No, guys, we're just messing with you. Uh, he actually uh, detorked these, or I guess loosened them up um, while they were on the ground, and so... Now that they're in the air, this will just be a lot easier to take off. But yeah, dude, these are absolutely filthy. These, are, these aren't hand tight on my end. 
Jimmy, talk to me. What are you using to currently clean these wheels? What's your favorite wheel cleaner? Uh, I stick with Brake Buster, typically. Brake Buster? Yeah. But, um, you know, I've dipped into the clean wheels. I've dipped okay. into uh, wheel products um, before I started working here. But, uh, okay. Yeah, this yeah. is still too tight, so I'm gonna go back over and watch. Jimmy, do you have a <laughs> do you have a hub centric rings on here? Okay. All right. Who's make... ready to get started on these uh, bang radical skedaddles? Anthony, wow. you gonna join me in one of these no, bad boys? Absolutely oh boy. Not. <laughs> absolutely not. From our friends at Pepsi and Bang, they've really been enjoying these live uh, live streams we've been doing. So we're we're about to watch Levi pop off. Ooh. I really wish I had the that, uh, is a, that tastes like Skittles. The, uh, so nut busting torque solution pack. Why didn't you bring it today? I forgot. Oh, well, and so it doesn't do us another any thing, good. Jimmy. We have to pop these center caps off. If that's okay with you. Okay. Jimmy, you're gonna pop these center <laughs> caps off. I don't want to break them, man. Here. Need like a fireplace poker. There you go. That's <laughs> you know, Levi's got that. Oh, there idea. you go. Just a good little pow. Ow. Ow, <laughs> bristles are poking me. <laughs> I don't think that's how that's supposed to work. See, Dane, and you thought that this wheel cleaning wouldn't yeah, take two hours. Yeah, that's not coming off. You know, no, I was preparing for the worst. I, I just got to make sure we give the people the content. No, they gonna they want to get a hammer. Yeah, just we're. Just I don't gonna, think we have any, but I'm going to go use from it. one side. Give it a good pop. It's going to come right off. I'm not worried about it at all. Um. Yeah, guys, this is what happens when you guys shoot a live video, right? You can't make this up, right? Perfect. There I you go. I think the term is, it do be like that sometimes. It really do be <laughs> like that sometimes. So though. while you guys are doing that, I'm going to throw some comments up on the screen. How about okay. that? Okay. We can start with Umberto saying, Anthony, with a long brush on the presentation screen, looks like he wants to whack someone. <laughs> wax somebody or whack? Uh, yeah, heard, whack them. I em. heard wax. <laughs> We're no. not going to be doing any waxing on today's no, episode. No, more, more like uh, mob guy whack. <laughs> yeah, no, we waxed somebody a couple a couple weeks ago, and that did not go well. All so right. Going, going back to our roots. Just normal oh. detailing. Umberto following up, just arrived from the post office and opened the rag company package with legit skull shirts. They look great. Nice. Which, I'm wearing one, by Big the way, right now. Right. I really love this thing. It's actually super comfortable. Holy Because so uh, we don't Jimmy. cut corners. We actually pick good quality t-shirts to put this stuff on. See, that's what I'm saying. Dane picked, like, the dirtiest car for us to work on. <laughs> I know. My hands are <laughs> You know what's super Oh, my goodness. A detailing live stream where someone works on a we dirty are, car? Are. What? <laughs> okay. We had to come in to do this. Oh, man. No, we all right. We're just kidding. <laughs> We're just kidding. Do you, want, do you have them all loose? I can just pull I do that have them all loose. On, you should be able to pull them And there. we've got another from Umberto here saying, Surprised it also included a free small cloth for cleaning my eyeglasses. How did you know I use eyeglasses? Amazing. Well, we Umberto. We just had a feeling. <laughs> the thing with the small cloths is they're actually they're meant for your glasses. They're meant for your cell phone. Anything that has a smaller screen, you could even use it for your rearview mirror in your car. I use one for that. It's really handy if you get fingerprints on there. You just take them right off. Really simple, and they're much higher quality than some of like the cheapy small cloths you tend to yeah. see that come with eyeglasses kits. So they're actually really nice. One of the things when we used to travel was I always had a handful of them in my bag because we used them so much, and it was always funny because uh, Dane and Anthony both never brought any with them, and so uh, they would always bum uh, lens cloths from me. So uh, it's it's a great feature. You don't realize how much you use it. You until will you use don't it. Yes. have one. That's the crazy thing. You know, their brains and their heads like, oh, I don't need one of these, so they don't pack it. But then, once they realize that there's one available, it is game over. So, just a little <laughs> something that we've always provided and always continue to provide for customers. Such a great, oh. useful little tool. We got Brett chiming Jimmy, in here. Uh, uh, by the way, earlier? I keep getting kind of hit, hits of it. Yeah. I'm getting a little head high from it. So I think was? you want to you wanna hear from Brett here, because he's the one who has the MR2 that came out in today's Wash Wednesday video. So if you haven't watched that, when we're done with the stream here, go ahead and check that out. That should be the next thing you watch, yeah. because that's a fun one, and it's cool V6 swap MR2. Uh, and Brett's the owner there. And he says, someone hand Anthony a towel. He's got something smeared on his face. Thanks, Brett. On my face? <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, that might M be it. My mustache? What are you guys <laughs> talking about? This has been here the entire time. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, oh. David Cervantes says, Hi, guys. Just got my mystery bag and my bead maker. Still super happy, even though it leaked during shipping. Man, we packed those things so incredibly delicately. It's a, it's amazing the, the links I'll go to to uh, somehow have One of these like is uh, stuck, Jimmy. What? Oh, they're stuck? All stuck right. like he needs more nut busting torque. Yeah. Oh. Our friend BJ Slinger in the house. So glad you guys are doing another live stream detail. He's about it. We gotta keep doing these. He's not having any issues. And we got Hans <laughs> clothes in here. I wanna see Halo stickers. Oh wait. Ah, uh, he's yeah, got the Jimmy? holographic stickers. That feels like a stripping. <laughs> it really do be like that. I, uh, it really do. Back on last, so that would be uh, our friends at the local Ford dealership. So it's up to you. I can still pull it. Yeah. All right, Jimmy. Then we got Jeff pointing out the stash. We don't have a socket wrench. Has returned. Hold on, it's coming. I got it. Dirty. Could be dirty. No, you're good. Yeah. Hey, man. Get All it? right, I got a question for Anthony here. Yo. Coming from Grant Hawtrey. You know him as the guy with the R33 Skyline GTR. Uh, need to know if Anthony got intimidated by that MR2 guy. Why would he be intimidated? I'm not sure. He seems to think you were. So uh, have to watch this week's Wash Wednesday to uh, determine for yourself. I don't know, I Brett. Think we you got feel on your pretty intimidating? <laughs> Well, it's not too bad over here, Jimmy. You're, uh, it's not, not that badly cross-threaded. No, it's fine. Looks just fine. So. And then we got Bait Man, out this, here saying, Sup, Ford This radical Bader. skedaddle is actually growing on me. It's kind of a strawberry delight. Thanks to our friend at Pepsi mm. for sending that out, right? Oh. I did like the apple crisp better. I'm going to move this, so watch out, guys. I don't know if we can get this over the hump. We may have to lift it. All right, so how are we wheeling this thing over here? Well, I think we're going to have to lift it. Are we actually? We're okay. <laughs> I don't okay, know. We'll see. Team lifting action. Why is it both of you on one end and me on the other? Because you're, so you're so strong. Because you're the stronger. I'm the strongest. No, the strongest of the two of us combined. No, but you have to have two of us combined to equal your strength. That doesn't count. Has to be individual strength, Gabe. Right? I am individually stronger than both of you. <laughs> one of the things about this rack is you can... Move it to any angle if you can get it out of uh, position. I think I've locked it there now. Yeah, Pretty when sweet. you when you articulate that thing, you have to actually kind of pull down while pulling the trigger. And then hopefully we have enough it. weight on that back to keep this thing. Jimmy, I think we're going to do you a favor and rotate your tires for you too. <laughs> well, he'll oh, be taking them thoughtful. off here pretty soon. Put his snow tires on. Jimmy likes to rock some studs. So. I'm gonna turn uh, our system on here. One of the cool things that you guys don't realize is we actually have Brake Buster on tap in, uh, in the studio. Oh, what do we got in here? Why, welcome guys. So as you can see, we got our spot-free system. We got it plumbed in here to our Krenzla, also plumbed into our spot-free system is this great uh, chemical distribution system designed by Keith Duplessy at Detail Plus. Now, in here, we have bead maker on tap, straight. This one's blank. We don't have anything in it yet. This one is O&R, 256 to 1. We're almost out, but as you can see, this has taken a very long time to get into it. Uh, this one is power clean at 4 to 1, I believe. And then this is Brake Buster Straight. So 
Uh, one of the great things is all these products go straight up into that system. Air compressor's on. Water's that'll on. Out your ears is what that'll do. And then what we got here <laughs> is uh, literally all the chemicals. So I believe black is brake buster, correct? We yes. have uh, the baby blue, the ONR blue. Keith is actually bringing us a new orange hose. Wow. For both sides, so that way we know that the orange stands for speed maker. Okay. Nice. So I'm gonna so do a quick it. little. Yeah. Pressure. Or is the uh, pressure's going? It's all your on. Air compressor's on. Everything's on. Or not your compressor? The Krenzla? Yeah, it should be on. Let me double check that. <laughs> so what we want to do first is well, this is what I'm kind of thinking, right? So there we go. That's what I want. I forgot to, to turn the power on. I yeah, plugged it in. You have to do that. So um, I kind of wanted to talk about Magic Wheel Cleaner today um, by Coach Kimmy. So this is um, a product we just brought on, and we haven't really made a video on it. We haven't really talked a whole lot about it. We do have videos on the Coach Kimmy product pages. So if you guys have ever gone to the product pages on the ragcompany.com, you'll know that we have some embedded videos that you haven't seen before on the Rag Company YouTube channel. That's because those are on our, our Vimeo, not to be confused with Venmo, but if you want to Venmo, Venmo me, Anthony. Fisher, <laughs> find me there. Just, I'm just kidding. Um, but um, yeah, so back to what I was kind of saying though, but really, so Vimeo is going to host a lot of our Coach Kimmy, a lot of our future product videos that we want to embed on the ragcompany.com, not necessarily into YouTube because we don't really want to clutter the feed, uh, but they are really useful and really helpful videos. And so uh, Magic Wheel Cleaner, um, basically, this is Coach Kimmy's this is their wheel cleaner. This is what they put out there. And so um, what's really cool about this is just like all the other Coach, I'm, I am leaning on dirty wheels, like all the other Coach Kimmy products, they put the pH right there on the bottle itself. So it's got a pH of 5.5. Um, and this is, a, so I wouldn't say it's, it's really highly acidic. It is on the acidic level of the scale there, um, with seven being pH neutral. But this is different from, let's just say like uh, Brake Buster, right? Brake Buster is gonna be an alkaline wheel cleaner. Um, and Clean Wheels was also um, an acid wheel cleaner, but a high, highly, highly uh, acid, but not acid wheel cleaner is an acid replacement. Whereas, like I said, Brake Buster being alkaline, this being more on the acidic side of things, but right below neutral, yeah. but still being extremely, extremely uh, effective. And so what I wanted to do is I was actually gonna spray one of these wheels down with the wheel cleaner first, do a pre-soak yeah. and then pressure wash it to show you what kind of result you would get pre-soak and spray. It's a great idea. One of the one of the things that's unique about wheel cleaners in general is I see so many comments and questions about people posting on the Facebook groups, on the forums, on all that stuff. They post a picture of their wheels and they say, how do I clean them? Yeah. And then you'll see 15 different answers for 15 different yeah. wheel cleaner products that literally run the gamut of the uh, pH spectrum. Yeah. So you'll have people that'll say, use a wheel acid. They'll have people that'll say, use brake buster. They'll have people that say, just use, use super clean, just simple use green. super clean yeah. or simple green or any of those, or use O&R or use this, use that. The point is you have to know what pH of a product you're working at because that will dictate what it's using to clean off the surface. Yeah. Very so good. every one of them is different. Now, yeah. most wheel cleaners are designed to do a lot of stuff, yeah. right? Brake Buster, phenomenal, all-purpose, non-acid wheel cleaner. Yeah. Total wheel, wheel cleaner. Wheel and tire, yeah, wheel and tire. So you can use it on tires. Well, it's a pH of 12. Uh, yes, correct, yeah. So it's an alkaline cleaner, meaning yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a little more scrubbing capability. It's going to be able to cre create a very soapy lather. Yeah. Now, it may not be able to break down products that an acid wheel cleaner could break down or like an a, acid like, a, like. like a, yeah like a true acid wheel cleaner right that will right and then you've got iron removers too yeah. and iron removers are designed to only attack the iron deposits correct yeah so then they'll add additives to allow to clean and remove the rest of the stuff that's on there but yeah. point is it's funny to see people post this stuff and say gosh i used one wheel cleaner and it didn't work and have everybody give them every other option around the sun so the point yeah. is try and add a couple different wheel cleaners. That's why we have different versions. That's why we have an all-purpose cleaner. That's why we have something like uh, one end of the spectrum. We have clean wheels, yeah. which is clean wheels is a, on the, on the acid, acid side, about two yeah. to three, two to four 
uh, in that pH range. And yeah. so there are various versions of wheel cleaners. So not each one is the same. Just wanted to let that out there so everybody understands. Yeah. No, and, and that's where it's, it's basically, and people talk about, hey, I sprayed this on, I rinsed it, it didn't do anything, right? right. And, and they talk about how they want it to be stronger. Well, guys, you only want that, set a realistic level of strength, right? Now, no, right. nobody likes scrubbing wheels. Nobody likes getting on their knees and, 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 and scrubbing and agitating wheels. It's not fun, I get it. So people have this idea that they want to spray on, rinse off product yeah. that's going to magically clean your wheels. Well, you know what that is? That's wheel acid. Wheel acid will do that, right? But wheel acid is also going to deteriorate um, your paint. It's going to deteriorate your coating on your wheels, whatever it may be. Whether it's also going to eat your concrete. Yeah, yeah, whether it's, yeah, it's going to eat your concrete. Whether it's, a, it's also going to eat the calcium in your hands, right? Yeah. There's so much wrong with old school, wheel, old school acid wheel cleaners or so much that can go wrong unless you're a professional and know how to use them properly. And so um, that's where, that's what people were using years and years and years ago, but we've gone to something that's more uh, to safe, something safer, yeah. now, right? And, yep. and that's kind of where we're at. So um, I just like the fact that Coach Kemi puts the pH of everything they have there. They're just really forward with it uh, and they put it straight on the bottle. So 5.5 is what you're dealing with on the pH scale on Magic Wheel Cleaner. So we're this, just under neutral. Yeah, just under neutral. And, um, but it's really highly effective. It, you know, it, it basically, uh, it does have a, a fallout remover, uh, an effect on it, right? And mm -hmm. so, um, but it also has just some really, really good cleaning ability in, um, uh, on its own, right? And with agitation, still builds up really good lather. It's just kind of finding something that's either the best of both worlds. And I feel like Breakbuster for a lot of people, right? For just a straight up wheel and tire cleaner, although it may not be the strongest wheel and tire cleaner out there, um, people like it for the price. People like it because uh, it's easy to use and you can't really do a whole lot of damage. Yeah. I haven't seen any issues um, in the years that we've been selling Brake Busters of anybody having any problems with Brake Buster. Right. Yeah. They usually, their complaint is it doesn't work well. You it doesn't use work. It right. Yeah. yeah. So. It doesn't work. Or my IK foamer, it, 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 it's not working my IK foamer. Like, what's the dilution of uh, full strength? And I say 10 to 1. 10 to 1, people, all day long. So, that's right. Um, anyways, Magic Wheel Cleaner, you can also dilute this if you want to. If you don't need the full cleaning ability, that's totally fine. You can dilute it 1 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, whatever you want to do there. Um, and it also does foam. So if you want to put this in an IK foamer, you can. I, however, feel like this is more effective just in the spray bottle as is. And that's yeah. coming from the IK sprayer guy that I love putting everything in an IK. I think that this is more effective just in a spray bottle. So I'm just going to do a couple sprays on here. I like Basically it. get the wheel coated. And we're just going to rinse this one off as just kind of like a test. And then what we're going to do is we're going to agitate the other ones. And then if you want, we'll actually pull in Brake Buster on one of these wheels or maybe even hit the tires of the Brake Buster since it's a total yeah. wheel cleaner yeah. and then knock this out on the maybe other that. wheels. So anyway. So one of the other thing that's pretty wild is uh, with the newer this. wheel cleaners, they actually contain rust inhibitors. So Jimmy, if you walk over and look at your uh, wheels or your hubs over there uh, and your brake drums there, you can see that they're starting to get a little bit of rust built up. Now, that's from everyday driving. That's just the natural order of things. Um, but one of the great things about products like Magic Wheel Cleaner, like Brake Buster, and even Clean Wheels is that they include a rust inhibitor so that it protects the componentry around your wheels, especially your lug nuts, uh, where your lug nut holes are on the wheels and things like that. Uh, so it'll protect those from corrosion. Now, Old school wheel cleaners don't have that. So using a wheel specific wheel cleaner, uh, especially some of the newer stuff is really key uh, to help protect some of that. You know, it's, it starts to deteriorate. Yeah. So it may have looked like I was spraying a lot. So the, the, I really wasn't. So basically on these sprayers, this trigger head, for example, um, the output is very um, modest, right? It basically, yeah, it, doesn't only, it only puts out as much as, you know, so that's where it's like you get a lot for what you get with the wheel cleaner, but it's not like pumping product out, right? So you're not going to go through this whole bottle. But so, but when you're sending out the stream, when you're spraying it out, it's a very small and very narrow stream. So um, in my opinion, I would say take whatever's in this bottle, put it into a new IK trigger sprayer, right? And that way you have that fine mist setting and mm -hmm. it's going to work really, really well. So um, anyway, so this has just been, I don't know on here for a couple minutes and it is a gel like substance right so when you are spraying it you'll notice it is more gel like um, which is you, good because it, it clings it has a lemon scent it's 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 uh, it's definitely the 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 uh, farty lemon mm -hmm. kind of scent yeah. but um you'll see though that it is already starting to break down all those iron deposits and you can see those little specks right there um those being the iron particles from the brakes but uh yeah no it's definitely it's definitely doing something, man. I mean, you can see how much purple it's turning. Yeah, it's just it's kind of hard to, to see on, uh, on the um, 
well actually you can just see the runoff right there yeah. right there <laughs> see how dark that that is down there so um but yeah this is something like i said in my opinion when you have a wheel cleaner that has a built-in iron remover this is something that i recommend diluting right mm -hmm. this is something because your wheels are going to be so clean all the time um from using higher end products that well and especially if you're washing every week especially if you're washing every week right and that's where i would highly recommend if you are using anything with an iron remover in it at least have coated wheels or at least make sure your wheels are protected because the iron remover will start to break down your protection the longer it sits and i don't think there's anything on these wheels right now so after we clean them we are going to be putting on some uh, g-technic c2v3 so uh well, yeah let's go ahead and rinse these things or rinse so this we're, one we're not gonna so one thing you guys are wondering we're not scrubbing this i'm not gonna scrub this i'm just gonna show you we're what gonna spray on we rinse. can scrub it and we do recommend agitating for this though we're just gonna let it let it play out yeah. see what happens i just want to see what happens just spraying rinsing off Dang. That worked, man. That worked pretty good. That, that worked pretty good. Just just with the spray. That did a lot. Dane, yeah, what do you, Dane, spray, what do you think? You like I'm that, I'm genuinely Dane? impressed from back here. I know a lot of people saw a brush in the thumbnail, and they're like, oh, you cheated, but you're not using a brush. But looking at that, I'm pretty convinced it did a lot of work. I think now, uh, Dane's found his new favorite wheel cleaner. This now, is I will Dane's say spray on rinse off wheel cleaner that he wants. Someone mm -hmm. more anal about this than me is going to say, well, what about the barrels? Did it really get down in the barrels? Well, I sprayed it in the barrels. Let me see. Sorry, Jimmy. Sorry. And Jimmy's tasting it. I mean, I actually do have a lot of comments here. I could be throwing up while you guys are doing this, too. If you guys yeah, even if you comments. put some of it, just put them up so some yeah. people can see that we're at least getting them. Yeah. Got some comments about shirts, people saying they're comfortable. Absolutely. About the eyeglass claws. Let's see. What do we got? Oh. Ian Musgrove. Okay. So, oh, Ian. Levi, up, this is a question for you. It's not about... Uh, wheels or anything, but he says, hey guys, where do you get your shirts made? Your sweatshirt is really ah. warm and comfortable. I would like to have some made for myself. Thanks. So the uh, shirts are a next level okay, 6210 CVC uh, <laughs> tri-blend. <laughs> so it's a uh, cotton poly and, or actually it's just cotton poly. It's a double blend. Um, then these hoodies, so we get the zip up and yeah. the pullovers our uh independent manufacturing that's company um that's the the hoodie um we get them all printed everything uh is purchased and printed courtesy of our friends at uh deadwood designs here in boise idaho uh, they're the ones that do all our stuff and fun story they actually bought the building directly next door to my shop uh when i had my detail <laughs> shop and so that's how i got to know them had them use, you know, print up some shirts for me. I fell in love with the shirts, fell in love with the hoodies. And one of the great things about them is it's a husband and wife and they've been doing, they do the band Built to Spill. They do a local company called Banana Inc. that does a bunch of Idaho inspired clothing. Um, and he does a ton of band shirts and other stuff. He's been doing it for a really long time. And one of the things I like about it is uh, his wife chooses all the fabrics. And one of her things is, she really likes comfort and really wants everybody to have the highest quality, most comfortable style. Yeah, and they're not doing the cheap scratchy and stuff. And stuff. It's yeah, really, really and, good. and their big thing, too, is uh, they don't like loading up a shirt with ink. Right. So um, you'll notice a lot of our designs are just a one color design, and that's solely for comfort. So it's light, it's easy, it's, easy. Yeah, it's, it's a shirt you can wear chunk. every single day. <laughs> yeah, because we've had shirts where you know, there's 15 different colors on it, or there's one big logo on oh, it that's four yeah. or five colors. Just a and your body plastered sweats. on sweats. Yeah. yeah, you just sweat because it's just so sticky, and it's just not a fun shirt to wear. It feels heavy. Yeah. So that's why we do this, and, and it keeps our costs down, which allows us to keep the shirt price down uh, yeah. compared to most. Pass so we do a, a high-quality shirt, an inexpensive print, but it's a shirt that you'll wear every day, and that's what we care about is that you, you want to wear it. Um, these hoodies are super durable. Uh, Independent is one of the companies that actually manufactures hoodie for Burton snowboards uh, and for, for the Burton company. So oh, that's yeah, why we... That's cool. That 
We got forensic yeah, so that's why we use channel so. chiming in, saying, what about yeah. the barrels? Exclamation point. Like what about the them. barrels? <laughs> John, a forensic. John, just making sure. What's up, dude? It's pretty late where he is. <laughs> we're going to get the barrels. We're going to go ahead. I think what we're going to do is we're going to drop the thing back to a level, and that's when we'll be able to do like a ring around from the backside. Rather than that, or I can just flip the wheel over and basically flip it to where the front's going down in. I can knock out the barrels from the top. It, however we end up doing it. But anyways, so I have it coated in Magic Wheel Cleaner, and I just have it now on my brush. I'm going to go through. So it builds up pretty decent lather, man. But like I said, after rinsing that one with no agitation, that was pretty... Pretty that was impressive. Pretty Honestly, yeah, that was impressive, impressive. man. That was and uh, I've got another comment say. here just saying, what's up, Levi, from Bernardo Archibald. And we got some hellos from the UK. And we got Glenn from Swag chiming what's in. What's up, saying, Glenn? What's up, guys? Man? And uh, so, <laughs> Antonio's BDE Supply Store. Father Levi with the chemistry lesson. Thank you. Honestly, oh, dude, thanks, I man. really am enjoying using this wheel cleaner. I know we've we've used this a couple times. We've used this a handful of times, and it, I mean, we we signed off on it and said that that it's absolutely fantastic because we were first introduced to Coach Kemi or got our first got our first batch of Coach Kemi stuff uh, almost a year ago, yeah. right? Yeah. And so we've used this a handful of times, and I knew that I liked it, but using it. I think not on the ground on my hands and knees cleaning a wheel. Yeah, that's this is very enjoyable. I'm actually like <laughs> really liking using this. Wheel I think cleaner. this. Uh, I think this uh, rack may end up in the back of Anthony's uh, yeah. Ram 1500. It absolutely takes might. it home to uh, mobile wheel the, wash station. Yeah, do well, his wheels on his cars. I feel like I'm just getting a really good clean, and like I said, like this product. You know when you when you spray a wheel cleaner and you start agitating it, right? right? And you're like, oh, I missed a spot. Or, you know, I feel like this is doing so much of the work for me and the yeah. agitation is just kind of following up. It's very, it's freaking satisfying, man. Good. So, so I'm going to try it on the tires. See if we can build up yeah, a good interesting scrub. interesting to see how that does. Now I got David Cervantes here saying, should I polish before applying bead maker or just apply it if it looks good? Honestly, we don't polish before applying it in a lot of cases. You just want to make sure your surface is clean first. That's the most important thing. That and just not having a really loaded down surface. So if you're the kind of person who uses like a million different kinds of like last step products or quick detailer, stuff like that that have protection in them, if it gets piled on too much over time, it can be a bit much and you can run into issues. So sometimes just going back to basics, decontaminating the surface with like an APC or something, and then following up with the sealant of choice, in this case, bead maker, you'll get the best result. Yeah. Agreed, Dane. Good job. And Bernardo, Monster Detailing Studio, he says. Uh, da, 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 da. And, oh, we got Umberto here saying, great, you sent Rick from Rag Garage a lineup of towels. He filled up his craftsman cabinet, says Umberto. He nice. did. He's one of our grand ambassadors, man. Yeah. Dude, Rick's awesome, dude. He is such a cool guy. Every time I've talked to him on the phone, it's just been a pleasure. And he's just really down to earth, really cool, really appreciative. I mean, with a guy that already has so much, you know, you, you wouldn't think that he'd be excited about being a grand ambassador and, you know, getting free towels. But he was, dude, he was, he was pumped. He was awesome. Anthony, you missed a spot right there. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, you totally missed that spoke. Oh, don't worry. Inside Joe's there. here to make oh, sure no. Anthony's on his game because he says so. Anthony trying to copy Luke Berge with the creeper stash. What are you talking about, guys? <laughs> I've had this mustache my, this, my entire life. <laughs> you didn't notice? <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, and then we have Ooh, a very nice. common question. Cleaning the barrels. Get in there, Oh, Anthony. see, that's nice. what people want to see right oh, there. They Perfect. came here for this. All right, John, a forensic. Does this make you happy? I hope it does. Uh, we've got... Vigelis Yar asking, what do you think is the best first polisher for a newbie? First polisher for a newbie. Gosh, that's a, uh, there's a lot of different ones, but I'm going to tell you the easy, most simple one, sure. quarter cable 7424. That is a really safe bet. Yeah. If you've never you used a polisher and you're looking to use a polisher, that's the best, uh, easiest, cheapest, simplest one. And Think of it in terms of you use it, you get good at it, you remove the uh, six-inch backing plate, right? 
Right. What we first tell you to do is get a five inch backing plate uh, so and that way you can dirt. use five inch pads with it. Then when you decide to upgrade to a long throw polisher like a 15 or a 21, what you do is put a three inch backing plate on it and that really wakes that little machine oh, up. Yeah, and now you have a three inch then. tool that does a lot of great things for you. So it's super oh, great, uh, great great advice. And like we usually argue you got to figure out if polishing is for you first. Yeah. I mean, you may yeah. like the idea of it, but until you actually try it, you won't really know. Yeah. So give it a shot. Maybe borrow a tool from somebody if they'll let you or, uh, you know, d take that route. And if you find that, okay, I I'm down with this, then, yeah, then you can pursue it. Yeah, I like it. Uh, we've got Lil Homie 86 saying, how would you go about cleaning and polishing chrome wheels? So chrome... Specifically chrome-plated wheels, the biggest thing about them, that is when you need to get into the acid level of pH. Chrome benefits very highly uh, and loves uh, the acid more than okay. anything. Okay. Is that why a lot um, of older, like, wheel cleaners were acid is because... Yeah, and that's so also why they were, they were known as chrome acids. Okay. So uh, wheel acids originally were for chrome. you got to remember back in the day, you know, if you even go back... 20 years ago, before the advent of a lot of custom wheels, majority of wheels that were put on cars were painted chrome or painted chrome or painted with chrome accents, uh, or they were just chrome, you know. Uh, you had a chrome cover over a steel wheel, and that's just how it went. But the biggest thing about chrome is using an acid in that spectrum range. So for chrome, clean wheels is a killer product for that. Um, Meguiar's makes a, a wheel cleaner, uh, like Meg's wheel cleaner is one of those. Um, there's a lot of different levels and you can reach out to a detail supplier and see about getting a wheel acid. Again, that's one of the things you got to worry about or watch out for is make sure you're wearing the, the appropriate PPE. You're wearing gloves, you're wearing goggles, you're doing all the safe stuff, uh, yeah. when you use it. So, so okay. Yeah, sorry, no, I great points. Here, just thought, Go for thought, it. Thought chime in. So. Get agitation. The magic little cleaner looks awesome, man. Those look, those look, look looks. They're clean. Killer. I mean, they're they're really clean. That's but what I mean, matters. That that whole experience, man, was just it was just really nice. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna on the on the one we just did a pre spray on and a rinse. Yeah. I'm gonna knock out that one thoroughly with a brush, and then what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna grab some brake buster and we're gonna knock out the other two, right? In okay. The same style. And yeah. Some kind of the difference. So right? this will be showing the difference of a. A wheel cleaner on, that on has a fallout remover yep. is on the pH of five yep. and a half, and then we're going to be using a, a, a wheel and tire cleaner, an tire cleaner yeah. that is a pH of fourteen, yeah, so or twelve. So, just some just some fun testing, you know. What and I mean? we're using yeah. spot free water, just so everyone's aware that is spot free water uh, coming out of there. So, I'm actually going to try. And to we're push inside our studio, away. so we don't have to worry about it drying in the sun or anything like that. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a little different in here. Yeah. Uh, oh, we got some more questions about wheels, if you guys are open okay. to it. Okay, go for it. All right, we got Nashville Bassist chiming in saying, have you guys ever noticed an issue with Cadillac wheels having the clear peel off of them? Uh, not specifically Cadillac. Uh, back in the day, I did notice a lot of wheels. Usually what happens is if a uh, wheel is curbed, um, then once that's broken, that creates a tear in that clear. Um, and then normal temperatures, hot and cold cycles, especially on a wheel, are far greater than what they are on the surface of the body of the paint or anything like that. So when a wheel is curbed, it does allow the ability for the element to penetrate uh, underneath that clear. So allowing it to have uh, a massive amount of clear coat failure. I will say there some brands are different. I haven't seen it specifically with Cadillac wheels. Um, however, it always does usually happen anyway with any clear-coated wheel uh, from a manufacturer. Okay, and I'm going to follow up with another one. This one comes from Facebook from Mickey Hendren asking, how often do you recommend ceramic coating wheels? I live in Colorado. Uh, ceramic coatings are usually always going to last in general, especially on wheels, because the wheel cleaners are a lot harsher and a lot more aggressive. You're going to get about a year tops out of a wheel cleaner, out of a good or out of a good wheel coating. Right. Um, now, most coatings say two years, and if you're cleaning them and you're not using harsh chemicals every time you clean, you know, let's say you're just, you've coated them, you wash every week, and you're using something that's pH neutral, like, say, just O&R and a towel, 
Um, you shouldn't have any issues. It should, and you're, let's say you're putting a sealant like bead maker or even C2V3 or crystal sealant or you know a type of sealant period on the wheel um, every few months, you shouldn't have any issues. It should last just fine. However, in the winter, you are going to notice more if you're going to run those wheels. Oh, my phone's going off. Run those wheels in the winter time. So that's one of the yeah. things you do got to worry about and take a look at and see. So um, key is on how you're going to care for them. But if you're going to continue to use it, you just want to set it and forget it. Maybe you wash them every month or so. Um, you're probably going to get about a year. Yeah. So. And I got a follow up question here, which is perfect because I'm looking at Jimmy's shot of Anthony. He's got the brush there in yeah. the crevices because nice. Alkaline Topad here is asking. Any tips for getting stubborn brake dust out of tight corners and crevices on wheels? Yes, yeah, stay up on it. Yeah. It's your own car. And then clean the cre clean those crevices often um, and then use a nice brush. So like that Detail Factory black bristle brush does the job. But I mean, if you, let's just say, skip the corners, right? Let's just say a couple months, right? Mm -hmm. That corrosion, that not corrosion, but that brake dust can build up, right? And harden up and get stuck in a corner and become harder to remove. And so... It bakes that's, in. It bakes in, man. And so that's why you just got to stay up on it. And, um, and that's, I mean, that's the advice to keep, to keep them looking better for longer. From yep. Nope. Good advice. And I got Lars right. here. Just wanted to say hello at Wednesday. What's up, dude? Lars, for those who don't know, he is the head guy over at Color Lock, which is a leather care company. They provide really, really killer products. For leather stuff, which I'm going to do a little plug for one of the previous live details oh, we did where we used a nice. lot of Color Lock products on that Sequoia. So if you dip back a couple episodes of these live details, and you'll see we use a lot of Color yeah. Lock on the interior, the seats, all that stuff on a, you know, well-loved Toyota Sequoia that had some miles on it. But it really made a difference. Uh, and then we've got Frostink here asking... Would two double twisters drying towels be sufficient for drying my Hummer? Yes. Well, I, I would say you should be fine. I don't know which Hummer you have, but, you know, even the smallest one is, like, the size of two uh, should be you great. Know, Jeep Unlimited. So, yeah, yeah. No, you're looking at two. I mean, two, remember, we, okay. remember, Anthony dried an entire Raptor with one. It's true. And we have it on video. So... You guys can <clears throat> check that out. Yeah. That was a detailing uncut episode where you can see in real time he does all the drying. And then when that's not enough, he goes back and does it again, gets the whole car wet again, does it with a different towel just to prove the point well, again. He does it first with a twist and shout. Yes. And then I soak the car again with a hose, and then I hand him <laughs> a double twister since they do it again. Yeah. You're like, uh, huh, so nice try. Do it he again. did it. He did it. He got it clean. I had to buy him a sandwich from Jimmy John's after that. So. Oh, Levi. Great question for you here. For uh, latecomer here, we've got Connor Cotton Game asking, what wheel rack is that? That is a, uh, what is that called? It's an innovative, innovative tools, tools, but it's a type of rack. I think it's an <laughs> ultra rack. It says it right on the side, I thought. Yeah, innovative tools, ultra rack. If Jimmy, if you want to come on down here and you can uh, show him the sticker on the side. Come on down here. Innovative Tools Ultra Rack. Go to innovativetools.com. Uh, so this is the Ultra Rack. We use it to hold hoods. We use it to hold uh, doors, trunk lids. It's got uh, these little arms that can gonna, move in and out. You can a do bit. a lot of really great stuff with it. Um, so as you can see over there in the back of the studio, Jimmy, if you want to come with me while they're spraying, you can see we've got a hood on this on another Ultra Rack, right? Yeah. So we have a hood on the ultra rack there and uh, that's really great because we can polish, we can do some of our demos and stuff, but they make attachment arms that hold wheels. Yeah, they're kind and of so, modular. Yeah, so those arms just go in, it's four arms each side and uh, it's designed to hold wheels. So if you're painting, if you're refinishing, if you're doing something with some wheels, you can do that uh, on that ultra rack. And uh, rolls all over the floor. It's got locks on it or brakes on it so it can stop and stay put. Uh, it's really great little tool to have. So Yeah. And uh, Alex Dwar here just saying wheels are looking great, guys. All right. So I'm thinking, so brake buster now. Should we leave it at this angle so people can see it better? Yeah. I think yeah. so. That's a good visible angle. 
So which one's dirtier, left or right? Well, I'm going to do the left one, I think. So left we'll one? Do. Yeah. Okay. Hey, what are you doing? Why are you using the brake buster in that thing? Brake buster on tap, I know, baby. I I want to use the new trigger sprayer. You can use the new trigger sprayer on that side. Okay. <laughs> Deal. So this is brake buster on tap. And uh, this is straight. Let me get this uh, pressure. Let me get the right mist setting I want. Look at that. Oh. Isn't it just nice up. having it right there, ready and convenient? <laughs> it's really great. Dane, it's probably one of my favorite things to have. What I love. If you guys are wondering, you can check these out at uh, detailplus.com. This Dude. is their dis uh, chemical distribution tool, and it's uh, custom built. Okay, and so it can be custom built for your detail shop. Look how much more satisfying this Ooh. looks than that, though, right? I'm spraying Brake Buster straight, right, and the IK trigger sprayer. Right, right. Yeah. Look at this, right? Right when I hit that tire. Wow, it's got a short little foaming effect. Quite nice. I mean, credit where credit's due. Ours the just IK pressurized with our favorite trigger sprayers. Yeah, ours just pressurized with air, so easy sprayability. Let's say you're in a wash base situation, you're in a production situation. Jeez, I'm spraying a lot. I'm just uh, doing it for this fun. This way, you don't, don't have to do. Well, you don't want an employee such as Anthony wasting product. I'm having here, a good time right now. Here, Leave me alone. This is here. Been fun. It's perfectly metered. Look at this. Look at that. I can just make sure I got nice, even coverage. It's exactly the amount that I need. Yeah, but look not how much better waste mine looks. It. Mine looks so much better than yours. Yeah, but I'm not going for show. I'm going I'm for going go. For, I'm going for <laughs> all the honeys. Okay. Yeah. And you can go for all the monies. That's right. <laughs> but if I have the monies, then I get the honeys. That's oh, so. I mean, you know, crap. delayed gratification. <laughs> all right. Um, so I've got more questions here. If you guys are ready for them. Yeah, bring them on. All right. So we've got Stephen Yoon here. I'm going to pop him up on the screen, asking, "Do y'all do a chemical okay, decon well, really with quick. a mechanical can I spray decon, that off mitt, now? or OG clay every time before a paint correction and yeah, ceramic coating?" What is your recommended process? Thanks. Just let me get around here so I got some scrubbing done on it. Uh, I didn't answer. You hear that, Dane? We were talking. Okay. Anthony wants so. to get uh, get this wheel cleaned off real quick. All right. So he wants to show the cleaning capability of just Brake Buster without scrubbing on this wheel over here. What are you guys doing? He's trying to show off the least work possible. That's, well, what do you that's think? For, for a Brake Buster spray on, rinse off, I think it looks pretty good. I'd say I actually prefer the Magic Wheel Cleaner in terms of spray on, rinse off, but it looks like it did something. It looks like the Brake Buster does more on the tires. It, it does. Yeah. yeah, the Brake Buster definitely seems to do more on the tire. Well, it's a total wheel cleaner, so yeah. it should it's, have that It's the, the full package, but if you're going on the wheels, yeah, no, that Coach Hemi makes a lot of sense. Um, let's see here. We do. I'll, I'll go ahead and put Steven Yunes back up on the screen here. Just to remind you again, so he asked, do y'all do a chemical decon with a mechanical decon, i.e. mitt or clay, every time before you do a paint correction or a ceramic coating? What is your recommended process? Uh, yes. If you're going to do a ceramic coating, yes, do both. If you're going to just do paint correction for a customer or you're doing like one or two steps, uh, you only technically need to do uh, just a quick mechanical decon uh, on the surface. Uh, that's all. You don't need to do... A whole bunch. Now, you can do a chemical decon because it's easy as just adding it into your step or your process so you don't have to kind of worry about it. But it's all in the amount of time you want to save, whether or not you want to do that for that customer, you know, if you want to charge extra for it. But in reality, a quick wash, a light clay, do a one step, you're fine. If you're going to do two steps, you're fine. But if you are going to add a coating, you want to make sure you do a full chemical decam decontamination, a full mechanical decontamination. Then make sure you correct that paint as best as you can and then coat it. So oh, makes perfect sense. Uh, we got Despacho Z34 saying, if you keep up on weekly maintenance of wheel cleaning, would you still need to use an iron remover as often, say no. one to two times a month? Nope. No, I no, recommend not, iron removers one, not, uh, never one once a year. A month. Once a go. year. Once, maybe twice a year. Yeah. If you're staying up on normal wheel If cleaning. you're doing it, do it every six months. It's the easiest way to do it. No. That Don't works. Don't do it any more than that. There's no reason to it. You're going to, it's such a, such a, you know, 
heavy chemical for the surface that yeah it doesn't now, need it i have had guys that said well i don't chemical decon every you know i do that twice a month but i clay every time i wash you don't even need to do that you need That's the clay. excessive. Same as if you're going to chemically decontaminate at least once a year. Yeah. You can do it twice a year if you'd like, if that makes you feel better. But in reality, once a year for either one of those is just fine. So Yeah. So we've got Clayton Williams here asking from Facebook, the process of repairing pitted wheels, inner barrels are bad on my truck. I don't think that's necessarily... For detailing here, gonna gonna solve that. Oh, I'd but say get them powder, get them powder coated, get them sandblasted. Yeah. If they're pitted, there's not yeah. much you can really do. At yeah, that you just point. grind them down worth, and then get them you know, redone. Yeah, maybe worth. Getting yeah, you can always wheels. use airline stripper on them and uh, soak yeah. them in that, and then get them back to a raw aluminum, and then you can do some sanding and some polishing uh, if you want to practice polishing, because then they basically become a raw aluminum. Or, like uh, the boys said, you know take them down and get them powder coated. But again, key is prep work. So I'd recommend if you're going to do powder coated wheels uh, and you want to powder coat your wheels and they're pretty rough, do the airline stripper on them, aircraft stripper on them, and then soak the wheels in that, spray them, rinse them off. It'll remove all the clear, all the paint, everything, and just leave it a raw aluminum. Then do some sanding, touch up some of the spots, make sure it's as smooth and looks as sharp and nice as you want it to. Uh, don't put anything on it, and then take it to your powder coater, have them powder coat the wheels uh, in that raw form, and uh, do whatever color you want and all that stuff. It's probably yeah, your best bet. That's perfect. Yeah, I mean, you're realistically, that's it too. all you can do. <laughs> yeah, and that way you're kind of refinishing the surface uh, prior to uh, the powder coat. So. Yeah, I mean, that's that's it, other than just getting a different set of wheels. Yeah. Okay, we've got Aaron's here saying... Uh, so you're washing in the studio, question mark? Does it have a drainage system? Ah, oh, fun fact there, uh, <laughs> Aaron. So we have a sump pump uh, on this uh, mat. Uh, so if you, uh, if Gabe follows me, you'll see that we have our capture mat. Or G Jimmy, hello. Uh, <laughs> you'll have our, we have our capture mat on the floor. Again, made by detailers, or Detail Plus. Um, and what we have here is just a little sump pump down here. Uh, that has a hose that feeds into uh, a drain and it goes into a floor drain um, and so what we do is we squeegee all that's why it's kind of dirty over here we squeegee all the water over here and then we pump it out um, so that's how we get rid of the water and we have a big shower curtain right here that we can close up the space park a car in here we can wash that way we're not getting everybody else wet yeah so that's how we wash that's how you wash if you don't have a drain, okay? So you can do that anywhere. So if yeah. maybe you're looking to move into a shop, you don't have a drain, then maybe the, the uh, you know, landlord or whoever of the shop says, hey, I'm not putting in a drain because they're expensive. Uh, capture mats are a great way to go. You just have to capture and pump that water into an approved sewer. So yep. you just gotta remember to do that. I used to have one of these at my old shop. I put it outside uh, and then we would pump it into the actual storm drain that I had for my shop. So, amen. Yeah, so, proper drainage is outside. Yeah, it's in the in between the two buildings. Well, my drainage was in my wash bay because I had a proper drain installed in my wash bay. Right. Yeah. So no, we would I'm just pump it back here. into the actual wash bay. Yeah. So it's kind of like adding a secondary drain system. So, uh, we got DJ polo here saying anthony dana levi need to have matching handlebar mustaches please i don't know about that <laughs> uh we've got oh good point umberto talk about how the ik sprayer doesn't tip off because of its base keeps it nice and stable uh, and then we've got oh you know what here's a good question from facebook we've got rick cole basking What's the difference between mechanical decon and chemical decon? Just like it sounds like, chemical decon is with a chemical like an iron remover. Where you spray it on the surface of the vehicle, it dissolves the iron deposits on the car. Mechanical decontamination is when you have to scrub the decon decontamination off, which is why you are clean the surface. So clean is known as mechanical decon decontamination, where you're using the clay to 
remove it, the mechanical aspect is this motion. Yeah, it's physical agitation. Yep. All right. Uh, we've got Carson Black here asking, what would you recommend on detailing liquid wrap? Now, I wonder I if, if he's I talking about you. like like the dip, <laughs> car dip, or uh, something along those lines. Why don't we just leave it here, pull the wheels off, we'll dry them off. Well, no, I want to dry it on the rack. It'll be easier. <laughs> See if I can lift it then. You guys are so strong. All right, team lift it over the curb because it's not a reclamation mat if it doesn't keep the water in place. Am I right? Yeah, well, and that's on the fun thing is uh, this side of the reclamation mat uh, has a hard edge. So it's actually very stiff. So if you guys notice when I stand on it, it's pretty rigid. It It doesn't squish down. Now, if I walk up here just a little bit, we have a soft edge here. Now, why is that, Levi? So this is so, the way we have this designed is that curtain actually, we run it to that wall. And when we pull a car in, we pull it up here and then we back it in. So up here is all soft. This is all soft, see? But we have hard edge for the back and up against this wall is all a hard edge surface. So I think you can see it, Jimmy, as I step up, oh, here's the difference. Yeah, there you go. Now, I'm going to chime in. We got Morgan McMurray, our very own Morgan Morgan. McMurray, far away from home, but, uh, you know, still here uh, in spirit saying, hey, Anthony, nice shorts. It's part of the uh, that's part of the TRC (laughs) um, work solution package. uh, Camo shorts with a Wash Wednesday shirt. Absolutely. I don't think she's actually looking at my shorts. She's giving (laughs) me a compliment on something else because on my could be my face. And your mustache? Yeah. My, my yeah. mustache, yeah, that I've had for Ign- all of my life. Ignore the obvious. <laughs> so, all right. C2V3, drying aid. Um, getting the wheels protected all in one step, and then we're going to come back over the tires uh, with G-Technics T2. That's what we're going to be doing. So, Wow. So these wheels, you'll notice. Yeah. Which ones did we scrub? Did you scrub this one again? Scrubbed, scrubbed, scrubbed. Now, while you guys are doing this, we do have Michael here from Germany this asking, that's a great wheel stand, and he wants to know the name of it. It's an innovative tools. Uh, what was it, the, the exact name again? You're noticing something weird. I don't know what it is. but So while, I'm while, noticing, while, while here's what I'm noticing. The Ultra Rack, that's right. Okay, yeah. yes, it's yep. made by Innovative, innovative tools, tools, Ultra, the ultra Rack. So here's what I noticed. So this wheel you sprayed. Left it on there, right? Correct. Just let it sit. And then rinse. Then rinse. And then, then came back. Right. Yeah. Sprayed again. Reagitated. Yeah. That one you sprayed and then agitated. Agitated while you the moment you sprayed. Yeah. Correct. Then these were brake buster. Yeah. Both agitated. Both agitated. Yeah. Well, this one was brake buster agitated. That was brake buster, rinsed off, then reapplied, yep. then scrubbed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Correct. Here's the deal, guys. I think that wheel looks cleaner. Than the rest of them. Hmm. I also would agree with you. After just noticing it real fast, just my eyes, and it's easy because we have great lighting and we have the wheels here, I see a grain on these wheels. And you can see it on that wheel specifically. There's a light grain on the edges yeah. that that wheel doesn't have. As I'm currently drawing it, sorry. No, but yeah. that's that's so the why bottom, I dried it. The bottom right one on the sure. rack is the cleanest, you think? Yeah, and I'm just looking at it, and it's just, you know, it's not that the, all the wheels aren't clean. They're clean. There's it's just, just that kind one, of a, a little scum. bit extra traffic film. It's kind of a scum <laughs> on these wheels. There's no such thing as traffic film. <laughs> it's called a dirty <laughs> car, guys. Gentlemen. Uh, oh no well, thing. okay. So just as a just reminder dirt. for the people at home. What did you do to that bottom right wheel that's different from the other three? Nothing. I just sprayed on Magic Wheel Cleaner and agitated it. Yeah, you sprayed it and okay. agitated. That was it. The other had it put on, then had water put on, then had it sprayed on again, and then agitated. Technically, this had it sitting on the longest with the, with the amount of foam that I had on there right. before rinsing. Yeah. Now, so this a little wheel extra time doesn't hurt. That, this wheel that, has the, uh, that had Magic Wheel Cleaner on it, is actually pretty dang clean. It's not as 
It's not as bad as the other ones. The other ones, I mean, they're clean. They're just not as clean. Now, some of this is just Barrel shot there, wear. by the way. Uh, oh, I got a fun comment here for you guys. It's uh, from a user account I have not seen before. It's Trains Ooh. of Finland. Ooh, Trains in Finland. Nice. Here's saying, hello, everybody. My first time on the channel, first time on the live. Well, welcome, Trains of Finland. We're happy to have you here. Trains, planes, and automobiles. I like that. <laughs> All right, now we're looking down the list here. We've got oh, Dino freaking Ooh. out. My OCD is so triggered that Anthony didn't wash off everything off of the tires. Got to order that MWC by Casey. That MWC, nice. Mm-hmm. And we've got, okay, and the guys are kind of talking about different kinds of decon because we discussed that. Uh, oh, we've got a very... Very good question coming here from Alkaline Topat. Anthony, do you have any updates on the ETA for the Microfiber Necromancy Solution Package V1? Yep, I do. What was it? Last Thursday we were saying we had 19 days was when the, when the moon would be in the right position. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So 19 is Thursday. Friday is 18. Saturday was 17, Sunday was 16, Monday was 15, Tuesday was 14, today is 13. Yeah. 13 days, ladies and gentlemen, till the moon is in position for Anthony to be able to release this uh, necromancer solution, mm. towel solution. So, so well, here, here's the deal, Levi, I'm going to agree with you on something really quick. What do you got? What's going on? Are you noticing that I, now? Yeah, no, so I wouldn't, I mean... How do I say this? Put these wheels back on. No, yeah. <laughs> Basically, um, no, the magic wheel cleaner, man, that that cleaned these. I mean, that did a, a freaking amazing job. The brake buster did great, right? But I would say You're that... You're seeing the, what I saw? I, I think that the brake buster on the limit of dirt that was on these and how dirty these were, that's like a multiple application, perhaps, right? You might have to right. go back and touch some things up, whereas the magic yeah, wheel cleaner... Yeah, you may have to increase, increase your dwell time. Seem to have, seem to have kind of got it in one go. Because, I mean, in the corners here, even yeah. where I agitated, I'm just like, what the heck, dude? I totally it's got still there, that. Right? I'm like, I don't know why that's still there. Now, did you guys notice that the, let's, let's go back. Let's rewind the tape. <laughs> These things were wet. I walked by at a glance, and I could tell that that wheel was cleaner. While Anthony was cleaning and spraying, it's a 23 years in this industry. We'll the eye right there, of the detailer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. I just, you know what I saw? I saw the way the water was reacting. Saw the way the water was falling off of it, and I said, "There's, there's dirt on these. There's no dirt on that wheel." Yeah. So I'm here. So <laughs> I hit it with some T2 right now. Ooh, some T2. Very nice. We don't even sell T2. Did you know that? I thought we did. No, we don't. We probably should. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, pretty, that's not good. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I really like. I think this the only stuff. way you can get it is in certain kits and packs. Yeah. Uh huh. Certain kits available at the rack. That's company. right. It is. It is in that sampler kit, is it not? Uh, I don't know if it's in the sampler, but it is available in the red uh, big kit. The, right. Uh, yeah. The kind of go uh, bag. Yeah, with the big red bag. Yeah. Jimmy's so, excited G-Tech. for his new wheel and tire look that he's about to have. Right. Oh. Now, for those still wondering about Anthony's necromancy solution for microfiber, the best clue I can give you is you need to be watching TRCMA. You need to. So when that happens, you ought to be there. Yeah, that's true, Dane. It really uh, could be like that Let's see though. here. We've got another <laughs> question here. we got Ryan Suderman asking, after a wash, can you spray on an iron remover and use it as a clay lube? You can. Yeah. And we've got Kill Obsessed Mobile. Kill two birds mobile. with one stone. Or oh. stone, right? <laughs> yeah. We've got obsessed mobile detailing here. No such thing as traffic film. Careful, you guys might trigger a certain someone from somewhere. LOL. Well, well I've been saying no, it that's for okay. years. <laughs> no such thing as traffic film. It's a thing. dirty car. It's just dirt <laughs> on your car. <laughs> that's that's what it is. All right. It's not some special thing. It's literally just dirt on the car <laughs> and stuff kicked up from the road. Not, not everything all. needs a term. <laughs> 
You have a dirty car. Wash it. That's all you got to do. <laughs> oh, that's use, the fun, Use the though. appropriate products to clean the dirty car, ladies yep. and gentlemen. If you got dirt that's sprayed up on the side or you got salt because you just went up skiing coming up here in the winter or yep. they put stuff on the roads, it changes seasonally. That's all and it is, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All it we've is, got dirt. William Choose the right here. products to remove them. We've got oh. William Broom asking. Well, actually, he's not asking anything. He just says hello from South Carolina. Oh, very nice. And very nice. Great ooh, stuff. okay. Here's a question. Yes. Wax it Auto Spa asking, what is the real longevity of G Technic C2 V3 on wheels? I don't know the real longevity. I'm yeah, going to say, say the same that's, that's longevity as you get on paint. I'd say, well, yeah, I mean, if you cleaned it off with wheel, with a wheel cleaner. Cleaner, wheel cleaner, I'd say at least a couple of months, at yeah. least, yeah. at least. Yeah. I mean, I on mean, wheels, yeah, you're dealing geez. with higher temperatures, but but like C5, I'm going on like what, like a year, almost mm -hmm. two oh, years. Oh, well, on C some C5 is a whole other ball say, game. That stuff is if meant for that. If you got a new that. set of wheels, or if you got a set of wheels that you love, or you're planning on keeping, do a deep C5. Do a deep clean like we just did. Hit yeah. it with C5 and call it a day, man. Now, for most of you wondering, like, how would I would remove some of this, uh, here's the deal. Those wheels cleaned up a lot better. Why? We used a different pH, okay? So that is a lower pH, so more towards the acid range. This is a higher pH that we used on these. Now, there is some stuff on it that we could not remove. Yeah. Now, it's not going to be that way for every type of wheel. But if you're a detailer and you have a couple different versions, the realistic reason to have a couple different versions of wheel cleaners is to have different versions of pH levels. That way you have something that can clean. Here, a 12 pH did great. <coughs> no issues. Sorry. You know, did a good job. Scrubbed, cleaned, all that stuff. However, the remainder is a light scum that is on the surface of these wheels. Now, we bring that pH down just a little bit, like we're saying, maybe to the magic wheel cleaner side, which is a right. five. Or we can switch over and you can do a quick bath with clean wheels on here to help break up some of that yeah. and remove what's, what's left. Because clean wheels may not have cleaned everything off of this either, yeah. depending on what it is that's on the surface of this. So. Waiting yeah. for this to cure. I want to hit another with another coat of T2. Nice. Uh, dude, I like to, I'm, a, I'm a two coat kind of guy. Two coats. All right. That's what I call you Tony Two Coats. They don't call me that. <laughs> I, He's got a mustache. I feel no. like it's appropriate. All right. So there's a few more questions here we've Tony got. Uh, this one's kind of a, a vague one. Maybe he just means in general, but he might mean about wheels. Let's see. Carson Black here asks, what would you suggest for a budget starter kit? I'm assuming he just means detailing in general. For towels or detail products. And see, that's where the challenge lies. He doesn't specify. So maybe specify for us, Carson, and we'll we'll work on that with you. Yeah, budget got, kit, I would say the first thing you need in a budget kit is O&R. I mean, that you does kind of solve of the a stuff lot of problems with right there. Yeah. yeah. Optimum no rents for those who don't know. Yeah. Now, we've got Dino here asking, what 13 days... Dean? 13 days of not washing my towels and waiting for that necromancer solution. Also, right. when will it be available in the EU? Well, we'll that find out. That is a great question. That all Probably remains to be seen. A few days after that is our goal. SEMA. I can try to summon something over there, right? Yeah. I mean, well, as, since I'm it's, sharing, all these it's towels. sharing spells back and forth. Yeah. You know, we got to make sure it's translated into the right uh, languages. Correct. Um, yeah. Because it could go horribly wrong. It could go horribly wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you could grow a tail. You could summon a ton of squirrels. Okay, that's enough of that. that. I got Trains of Finland here asking another question. Yeah, Dean. Uh, I'm starting my own detailing company next spring. Okay. I'm making okay. sure to include lots of rag company microfiber towels in my collection. Very nice. That's not a question. Very that's nice. a statement. I like it. <laughs> nice. Uh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, Yoshi's so saying... Make sure you hook up with uh, Rag Company Europe. Yes, that, that would be recommended. We got Yoshi here saying, we need a Matty level rant from Levi. That would be hilarious. I think he <laughs> means about your traffic film. Well, you know where you can find that? <laughs> at the Master of Shine at Home podcast. Well, that's if you yeah. get into a rant. <laughs> I'm mostly just kicking back, drinking a nice cold Diet Pepsi, hanging out in the garage. So, the MOSHQ... 
And then we've got John Perone here asking, what's your opinion on MaxGuard wheel coating to protect from road salt? MaxGuard yeah, wheel coating to protect from road it. salt. Never heard of that product. We generally use C5 on wheels now. That's yeah, kind of been the most, approach. Most wheel coatings, so you need to make sure that the wheel coating is designed for the actual substrate it's on. So if you're putting a coating that's designed for clear coat on something that is just a metal finish, mm -mm. it's not going to work. It's that's got to have a clear last. coat on it. Now, most powder coats do have a clear coated finish from the factory. The question is whether or not it's a thick or a thin coat. So that could be uh, another thing. So, no, Good point. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Colby here. Halloween mystery bag comes in today. Looking forward nice. to seeing what's inside. Keep up the great content. Thanks, Colby. Then we <laughs> Trains of Finland wants to point out seriously in love with the Eagle 500. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. A lot of people are. It's the best towel out there for a lot of things. Oh, no. And then Chris asking about a certain poll in a certain Rag Company podcast That's discussion right. group. That's right. I am leading right now. Get on the Rag Company <laughs> podcast <laughs> oh. discussion group and make sure you vote for the sexiest TRC host. That shouldn't have been a that, that shouldn't be a thing. That's it's a not. perfect poll. It's exactly what it needed. You know, it was funny. See, that Levi Dane, wouldn't be saying Dane this was yesterday because I was actually beating him. But. <laughs> Dane was actually out there puffing up his chest yesterday because he was in the lead yesterday. Today, I feel like it was I'm mostly in the lead. irony, but hey, I'll Today, take it. I'm in the lead, and Anthony is just kind of pouting because he's not in the lead. No, I got so well, blown the mustache out doesn't of this help. whole thing that I grew a mustache. <laughs> I said, forget it, man. <laughs> well, I said, just I, an I said, well, I'm going to be ugly. I'm going to be ugly. And that's I'm going to tell you one thing, though. You know, he picked a very good – Joe Wetzel put that up there. Picked a nice vid nice picture of Dane, you know. He did. A good-looking picture of Dane. A picture of Dane. Looking sharp, sitting in his old office here at the, uh, at the rag company. Looking, you know, it was kind of a, you know – Look cute, might delete later kind of picture. Yeah, oh is boy. exactly you know? what it was. Felt then he pulled a beardless photo of me, right? Oh, no. How dare he? <laughs> when he could have put a beardless photo, and we all Levi's know. Levi's only I interested if We you all know I would have won. Very, very carefully staged photo of him in the, uh, the bar setting with the Dixon flannel and the whole thing. Well, I mean, it's a good no, picture. No, he could have done that. No could doubt done about that, it. Or utilize some of the great photos of me hanging out with Gabe's dad's truck at the penitentiary. Uh, there, there is that, too. That's you another definitely great didn't series waste the that opportunity. is beardless. <laughs> beardless. I made sure I posted that. And, Anthony, we all know <laughs> mm -hmm. shirtless muscle This has gone Anthony, so far off quite track, Quite possibly guys. a great I photo to be in for a I Junis here from Finland so, saying, <laughs> what microfiber chose, towel would you guys recommend chose the for paint one. and glass? Plush high pile towel? Versus waffle whip towel. I would use the waffle weave for glass. Yeah. Yeah. Glass yeah. has a very glass, different glide. Long pile, not for glass. Stickier. If you use a long pile towel, it's going to pull the fibers out of the towel. It's going to roll over. On a on microscopic you. level. Jeez. Yeah. Jimmy, that's you got why a set of wheels. <laughs> that's why traditional wheel. glass towels are that really, really so, tight weave. So you put CTV3 on that wheel down there? You I'll didn't do it on any of the others? I did, I did it all of them. Oh, thank you. That was nice of you. I didn't do it mm -hmm. on, on the one I dried. You were supposed to. Oh, I didn't. Okay. So two all wheels right. have C2V3. Three. three. Three of the wheels. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't know you did, did all three. Yeah. I got a question so from I'm going to do a dry here. application then. Okay. While wow, you, you guys are doing that. You can see the gloss. Look at that, guys. You can actually see the gloss between the ones that actually have C2V3 and the one that doesn't. You so I've that? got Michael here. Asking, how do you clean Can applicators and microfiber sponges, which were used with tire it. shine and or plastic rubber stores and dressings? Couldn't hear you, Dane. Say that one again. So Michael here is asking, how do you clean applicators? Say like the ones, sponges that you use with tire shine, rubber restores, dressings, that kind of stuff. Uh, you wash them. Well, he's probably looking for something more specific than that answer. You wash them. It's literally how you clean them. You wash them. Yes, but the how machine, would you wash them? Put them in the washing machine and wash them. What? Do you use a particular detergent, a temperature no, just, no, of just water, wash them. anything no, like that? You know, they're, you're using them on tires. You wash them. Okay. Keep it dead Now, don't simple. take it to your house and do it because you're, <laughs> just so you know, you're 
significant other may uh, be, um, you know, against that, right? Anthony, I think if you took a bunch of uh, of these tire dressing pads to your home and yeah. put them in your washing machine, I think your wife would be very upset. Oh, yeah. She'd probably Absolutely. wonder what happened to the washing machine when you were done with it. So take it to a laundromat, use one of theirs, <laughs> or have your own work <laughs> washing machine. And mm. here's the deal. If you are going to use your mm. one at home, make sure you run a load of nothing and make yeah. sure you clean out that barrel, make sure you clean out that so you don't leave any residual yeah, dressings. Yeah, and in between wash uh, is in good. The, in the you can barrel. run You can run like a, a, just an empty cycle of vinegar. Is what you, you could, yeah. Yeah. Also, it's good to get a towel and just wipe it all out. Yeah. Make sure it looks good. Uh, wow. Oh, guys, we got Carson Black here with a Miata in his profile pic saying, sorry about all that. I just meant an all-around car kit. So he just means like probably like a go kit you could use maybe in the trunk for detailing. Just kind of an all-rounder. Yeah. Uh, 365s. Um, really the best kit you want if you just want some towels. Just grab one of the one of the gold kits. Yep. Add that to your cart, and uh, realistically, you could even grab one of the G Technic. Um, is it an essential kit? That's what it's called, yeah. the big one. Yep. It's got a bunch of G Technic products for just using, so it's a lot of great care products. Plus, comes with a neat holder, and actually comes with a couple towels too. Yeah. So. Now, yeah. if you have those together, you've got enough to definitely start with. Yeah, and as always, grab yourself a bottle of O and R. Mm-hmm. All right, we're coming down. All right. Why are you bringing it down? We still got to put the wheels <laughs> on. on. No, we're doing the wheels the aren't on wash for the wheels off. Okay, bring it down. Mm, okay. Put it at that I perfect don't, I don't know how to wash do this height. Oh, I got it. <laughs> perfect. So while Wait, you're when? doing that, I'm going to pull up another comment. We got Andrew uh, Oxenrider. I guess that's his name. Uh, I want to ceramic That's coat good. my car with CSL and XO, but I Bring don't a have a garage to, to let my coating I'm going to let Jimmy cure. do that because I'm not that good at that lift. Jimmy, you time that because I'm not trying to lay frame on your Ford Focus. We can lay frame. We can right. lay frame. I'm going to assume the guys can't hear me right now. So Dane, I can hear you. We're just l watching it precariously just, like, trying to lower you. Jimmy's Sorry. car. All right. That's good, Jimmy. There Let's you go. There. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I'm just waiting for it to bounce off the lift. Well, you made it. All right. All right, Dane, what's up? So we've got Andrew here, Oxen Rider, asking. Okay. I want to ceramic coat my car with CSL and XO, but I don't have a garage to let the coating cure. Can I still apply the coating early in the morning and hope it cures enough before the evening dew hits? Yeah. It's 12 hours. That's what you got to worry about. Okay. So, uh, and then we've got at some. Eight, get it done by eight. You should be able yeah. to get it done by, you know, have it finished within 20, 30 minutes. Uh, if you're fast, 40 minutes by the time you're done. And then really it's a don't get it wet for at least eight to 12 hours. So, but realistically, put C2V3 on top and you'll be fine. That That'll does help. help it. Yeah. Buy a bottle of C2V3, wait for about an hour after initial application of the coatings. And then, uh, yeah, CTV3 it. That'll help protect it against the wet. So. Okay. So I have some big red sponges, or some, a big red sponge and ultra black sponge. Ooh, nice. I think we'll just do a quick little wipe down. I right? like that idea. Quick little dry. I'm going to go gonna wash my hands. We're going to examine these taillights. <laughs> and, okay, we've got some comments, updates about the voting going on in the Rag Company podcast discussion group. About what? Uh, well, we've got Christopher saying, Anthony's way sexier. Why? He's always eating. <laughs> then we got Yoshi says, Dane is in the lead by one vote. Oh, wow. Didn't see that coming. Uh, and then we've got Scott here saying, any vote not for Dane is pure sarcasm. Man, I really appreciate that. Even I don't believe that, but I appreciate it. Uh, all right. And then we've got Anthony needs a photo with his cookies, followed up by, here we go. Here's a, here's a detailing question. All right, we've got Eco Green Detail saying, Hello, guys. I would like to ask about your optimum no-rinse. You have no-rinse wash and shine and no-rinse wash and wax. Both say they protect the exterior. Which one is best for mobile work? Well, actually, that's, that's a good question. I mean, that's something a lot of people run into. They see the blue, they see the green for the optimum no-rinse, and they go, well, which one's the right one for me? 
If you're doing mobile work, it really depends. Are you applying a protective product when you're done washing, or do you want to just get it all done in one step? If you're going to wash and you're not planning on adding anything afterwards, but you want to have protection, green's the way to go. If you're going to be polishing, if you're going to be doing any other kind of stuff to it, though, the blue is the way to go. That's the wash and shine. That way there's no added protection. You can control what happens next. So the wash and shine, which is what, you know, Anthony here is using, that's going to be for when you plan on doing something different after the fact. You just want to clean the surface. The green is for wash and protect. All right. Hopefully that helps answer that. Uh, oh, hey, Anthony. Yes, sir. Uh, we got Sam here. Asking, are these mystery packs people are talking about still available, or are they sold out? They really loved the last one that out. I got a few months ago. Oh, they're they sold out? Fortunately sold yeah, out. They oh, still man. ended, on, ended Monday. on Monday. Holy cow. All right. Then we've got... So here's a good way for oh. uh, that gentleman, Sam. Uh, is that the one that asked the question? Yeah. About the mystery bags? Yeah, Sam Cart. Okay. So, Sam, easiest way to be on top of this stuff, go to theragcompany.com and join the newsletter. When the newsletter is called the details, sign up for the details newsletter. When you sign up, you get a 15% off coupon as well that can be used, but that's how you stay informed as to whenever we do these things because those that have the newsletter get it first. You're able to make that drop quickly. So, the nope. future... Sign that up for helps. the newsletter. Yeah, and I think anybody would benefit from that. So if you haven't done that already and you're halfway interested in getting into detailing using products yourself, that's a super easy way to get started. I mean, we give um, you a free, we give you a coupon for 15% off. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? You don't have to. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, if I give you my email, you spam. No, we, we don't spam you with a bunch of stuff. It's literally only when there's actually a, a purpose behind it. It's yeah, something it's you'll It's not want. every day. It's literally... No. When there's a sale or yeah. like we're going to be uh, sending it out for the upcoming event in 13 days. Yes. Uh, we're going to send out a thing for that. And like I said, only when we have a sale. So it's, yeah. it's very rare. So I really, believe it. you don't have Jimmy's, to worry about it. <laughs> Jimmy's Ford Focus is the perfect size for only one fill of the Multi-Pro wow. 2. You wow. You did all that really with the Pro great. 2. I Quite literally impressed. the perfect size. That was it. That was, the, I was, that was all the way to empty. And I got full coverage. Not the insurance, but just full coverage. Ooh, guys, vehicle. I got a question What's here. Well, actually, it's more of a comment here. Well, kind of a question. Mickey Hendren asking, I recently switched over to the gauntlet drying towel from the Adams okay. Waffle Weave, and I love them. But I'm intrigued by the double twistress. Is there a big sorry, difference Dan, you broke between up like the crazy two? Crazy. Okay, sorry. He's mainly asking if there's a difference between the Wait, gauntlets, hold on. which he's using. Oh, so he switched from the gauntlet to the from the Adams waffle weave. Correct. He loves them, but he's intrigued by the double twistress. Yes. Is there a big difference in the two? Yes. Well, the big the biggest difference is the tw the double twistress is a twist pile towel. The gauntlet is a twist with a plush. It's the easiest way to describe it. Yeah. And yeah, you'll you'll mostly notice the difference when you're actually using it on a surface, but I, I it's will different say strokes for in, different folks. So in terms of dryability, absorption, if we're doing everything same size, so let's say we take a twenty by thirty or or twenty by twenty four size um, in a waffle weave, we're gonna absorb about ten times its weight in water. We go to a twist loop towel. Twist loop towel is going to absorb almost 12 to 14 times its weight in water. We go to the gauntlet. The gauntlet is going to absorb about 15 times its weight in water. So that'll probably help you in your yeah. search. 14 to 15 times its weight in water. If you like the gauntlet, there's no reason to change. I mean, you love the gauntlet. That's, that's really where it's at. I'm just a really big fan of the double twist just because old habits, they die hard. So... You don't got to tell me twice, sister. So fun fact, I actually lose Dane when I come over to this side of the car. Hmm. I don't know if it's the car or uh, the, just the, the fact that I'm being shielded from the antennas in this area. There may be a little of that going on. Jimmy, but, this uh, thing needs a polish. 
Oh, it's very <laughs> sticky. Some weird stuff on here. Isn't it even, sticky? What are you even parking under? Nothing. Hmm. Jeez, Jimmy. Am I hearing a next video idea? <laughs> no, no, Dane, Dane you're not. <laughs> Oh no! What do you guys think? Watch him. What do you What do you think we Jimmy, should do? Jimmy, are these bling rings? They are. <laughs> Did you have rhinestones in there? Or? <laughs> oh, light them up! Very, very nice. Those look good. Oh, here's one for days you. Do it, Dane. This is a perfect candidate for your solution finish that you like doing so much. Oh boy. Okay. Well, you know, we'll have Dan come out here. That. We'll have him do a little solution finish demo for you guys next week. Hmm. I don't get think that really constitutes this, a whole lot of video. Pop a chrome out on this paint. So, now that you're vote, on this side of the for car. Me, uh, <laughs> if that's something you guys want to see on the uh, discussion group uh, on the sexiest uh, TRC member, make sure you vote for me if you want to see Dane polish a car. You do not want that. <laughs> All right. So we've got Colby Garbett here saying, did a ceramic coating job with CLS and EXO and used the green pearl weave towels. I left one out for a couple of days and the towel was not hard. Do ceramics sometimes not crystallize in the towel? Or yes. do some ceramics Some ceramics not? are different in the towel. It also depends on how... So the reason for the pearl weave is it's designed to not absorb a lot of the ceramic. Yeah. It's designed to level the ceramic. So you're leaving more on the surface. Okay, we got one more here from Carson Black who has the Miata. One last question. Do you guys do pickups for local guys? Uh, detail? No. <laughs> no, I think he's talking about products. Do pickups? Oh, pick up a product. I thought he meant like a yes. truck. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you go on the website and you, uh, you go on the website, you pick up, uh, you place your order. And then in the comments section, you say local pickup. That's it. Yeah. Place your order. We refund you the shipping and uh, you show up here and the box will be waiting for you to show up. Yeah, as as usually here, around the say, shipping hey, I got door. An order for so and so, and team will bring it out to you. Yes, sir. Oh, we got Klaus Nielsen here. Is citrus W5 effective in terms to remove road salt instead of a dedicated salt remover? Is W5 okay? I would say yes. I've never had an issue with it. I've never had an issue with. You know, having to remove salt. Okay. Especially using an all-purpose cleaner and something that is a citrus base. All right, what do you think, Anthony? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a solid one. And then we've got Junus here asking again, hello from Finland. Man, Levi. Jimmy, this card's black on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, Levi. have you ever seen such a dirty car before? No, it's very concerning. Why did we sign up to do this? Who, who? I don't think I did. Who signed me up? Dane signed us up. Ah, I knew the he, people would want more Dane, than just this, wheels. He always Dane, this says car this. is dirty. It's a rinseless wash. <laughs> this isn't in my contract, so you know. Actually, it is. You're a detailer. You're detailing. Okay, so uh, we've got no, Junus Dane, here. No, Dane, I don't know where. <laughs> I have no idea where you got this idea that I'm some sort of a detailer. I've got poor Jonas here waiting with a question, and you guys just keep literally, ignoring it. <laughs> literally wondering. Anthony, I mean, what in, their, in his right mind does Dane think would give him the, op uh, the idea that I'm a detailer? You're not a detailer. You're a business uh, development person. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. Brand development, yeah, absolutely. Brand development manager here, Dane. I don't know where you would get that idea that I'm some sort of a detailer. Okay. So. Well, on that note, check out. We've got Hello from Jonas! Finland, Levi. What's He's up, asking, dude? how did you come up with the menu at Hawks? Uh, it says, I think it's smart to not to not to offer $30 wash, but a $75 wash plus light interior instead. I really like your cost per hour. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, it's a lot of trial and error. Um, 
a lot of just figuring out what I wanted to do and figuring out uh, what my cost per hour was. So each item I basically put, also put a breakdown of how long it took us just so people understood kind of what they were paying for and then they could do kind of a breakdown of shop minimum. So um, I would look at the services you wanna offer, what you'd like to get for that price and then how that would work out based on what your current shop rate is. And remember guys like, and gals, hair salons have a cost per hour, right? That chair that, the, that, that you sit in when you get your hair cut has to produce a certain amount per hour, right? Tattoo artists have a cost per hour, right? And they all have a minimum, right? So they're never gonna get below that. You're never gonna get a $1 haircut, right? You're never gonna get that. You're never gonna get a $10 tattoo. I hope you're not getting a $10 <laughs> tattoo. Oh boy. Point is, it could be a very tiny, Levi, it could you take have $10 them. tattoos. You have free tattoos. I do, shh. So, it could be something as small as a letter, right? Like one of these, right? Could be one of these guys. Doesn't matter, it's going to cost, they're gonna do their shop minimum on. So keep that in mind. You know, some people are always like, oh man, well you're just gonna wash it and it's $20 down the street. That's fine, take it down the street. I am a human and I have two people working on this, right? This is what it's gonna cost for us to do that. So always just be honest and upfront with your customers and let them know. You know, and again, what is their time worth? Their time, heck, if they're a lawyer, if they're a doctor, their time, their hourly rate is probably gonna be higher than yours. So remember, go, hey, what do you get paid per hour? If they're like, oh, I'm 150, I'm $200 an hour. Okay, so for you to detail your car, it's gonna cost you, or wash it, let's just say wash, one hour. It's gonna cost you $200. Why don't you pay me 75? to wash the car. You're saving money when you do that, right? Your customers need to remember that, you know? You're also an hourly rate. Your company is an hourly rate. You have fixed costs that you need to handle. And remember, you also have the same fixed costs as a lawyer or a doctor, depending on the area and the neighborhood you're in, right? Your rent is probably gonna be the same. If you're in a very high priced neighborhood, that rent's gonna be the exact same price as if they're having an office or something. Sometimes you're gonna be higher because you're looking for more square footage. So think of these things. Yep, absolutely. Great points and stuff everybody should be thinking about when they pursue that. Oh, using paint gloss, nice. I am. Now, smell I've got good. Christopher Pence here saying, Dana's like that badass radio host. Well, it's hard right, not to love well, I was him. See if there was I'll take paint it, gloss. Christopher, you're on my, you're on my good started. list. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we've got Eco Green Detail saying thanks for the help and a ton of emojis expressing thanks for that help. You're welcome. And now we've got Alkaline Topat asking, have you guys noticed any performance difference among the various free and clear laundry detergents when washing microfiber towels? <laughs> no, I haven't because hmm. they're pretty stripped. You got to remember. They're pretty much free of a lot of things and they're only at that point you're only worrying about the the whatever the chemical makeup of what that's what's in that soap what yeah generally the gloss? most notable thing about them is what's Sorry, not Dane. in them what does paint gloss smell like to everybody cinnamon what? oh it smells like cinnamon to me yeah really Jimmy, what does it smell like to you cinnamon, like cotton, candy. cotton candy what kind of cotton candy were you eating cinnamon as a flavored cotton candy What? <laughs> Jimmy, is your nose working right? <laughs> all right. We've got trains of Finland it's back good. at it's it again. It's coming off. It takes off all the extra dirt that's on the car. <laughs> I know. Speaking of smells, trains of Finland says, I've watched lots of reviews of O&R, and I've never heard someone or anyone really talk about the absolutely amazing smell. Yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Yep. O&R is one of those awesome standby products you always love the smell of. Uh, <laughs> basically, we got Grant Hawtrey here just Gee, uh, chastising Anthony. Right now. Thanks, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yoshi, Levi, I'm not what? a detailer. 
as he wears his detailer shirt. <laughs> Followed up by Alkaline Topad saying, ask Dane if they'll launch the fake detailer shirt design I sent them. No, we <laughs> cannot do that, but it is hilarious. <laughs> that's a great idea. Oh, that's a good one, man. That's a really good one. Uh, okay, so we've got... Oh, Andrew back at it saying, thank you for the info. I really wanted to try coatings, but I've stayed away due to the lack of having a garage. Yeah, no, you, the coating, so if you were doing coatings five, maybe 10 years ago, 10 years ago specifically, uh, many of them, you needed clean room, you needed uh, UV lighting, you needed, I mean, it was, or infrared lighting. I mean, it was, it was crazy the amount of stuff you needed. You needed to have a dust free clean room. I mean, it was just, it was very difficult back then to do a coating. And I think that's where a lot of the fear comes from now. Um, but uh, nowadays, I mean, you can do them in your garage. You can do them. There's tons of mobile detailers that are doing them just in people's driveways, you know, or parking lots. Key is just making sure that you're doing it at the right temperature, the right humidity, and uh, not a lot of wind. Because that's the last thing you want is to have a lot of dust build up. Yeah, so, that stuff can really screw with everything. Yeah. I mean, it's just going to make your job really hard regardless. So, okay. Oh, Eco Green Detail asking, what's best, the big red sponge or the new ultra black sponge? Ultra black sponge. I mean, you can basically explain why. To me, it's because you don't have to. The big red sponge. Yeah. So. Well, you don't have to season it either. <laughs> so, with new ultra black sponge, you can just get it and go. Well, the biggest thing is like a lot of people. Biggest complaint with the big red sponge was it needed to be seasoned, right? The question was that a lot of folks would buy it, they would rip open the bag, they'd throw it in a bucket of O&R, they'd instantly use it. The sponge was very stiff and they go, oh, I didn't really like it. It didn't really move along the surface the way I wanted. The ultra black sponge takes care of that completely. So um, you don't have that worry anymore of being, you know, too hard. It's nice, it's soft. It's ready to go right out of the bag. The red sponge used to have to keep it in O&R for at least 24 hours uh, to soften it. We usually recommended 72 hours. Um, but the black sponge, the ultra black sponge, you do not have to do that. It also is uh, much easier to hold. Uh, we developed it to fit my hand profile. Um, and I've got arthritis, and it makes it much easier. So simple, easy, and effective. Okay, I've got a follow-up for you here, too. Okay. Uh, from Ryan Suderman, following up on that other question, what are the benefits of using the big red sponge compared to microfiber rags? Let's just say the ultra black sponge in this case, because that's the one we'd recommend now yeah. going so, forward there. So like we said, we've got both in here, right? So one of the big things compared to a towel is it holds a lot more fluid. You have the ability to add more to it, so to speak, in the sense that on the surface it adds more liquid. These little grooves in here help wash, it helps scrub, and it helps lift product up into the surface. So it pulls the dirt up in here. You also have the ability to get into stuff, and it scrubs a little bit better than a towel. Now, nothing wrong with a towel, but once you get used to O&R, you'll realize this is a much faster process. This is a much easier, no. safer process. So that's why we go with the sponge. I agree. All right, okay. so I'm gonna get ready to polish out these tail lights. Ooh. Um, so here's kind of my thoughts. I want to grab the 75, the, the Mini, the LHR uh, 75, um, just because I think it has more power than the Hybrid does. But I'm going to do a test spot with the Hybrid. Uh, I'm going to see what kind of result I can get. I'm going to start off with the yellow wool in the last cut, and then I'm going to try to finish out with um, a yellow foam in the last cut. I think it's going to look pretty good. I just I think that having an actual powered machine, a uh, wall-powered machine with more just more power in general would give me a better result. But we'll see what happens. So probably going to start up top here now that the paint's clean and work my way right around that area. So Yeah, that's looking pretty foggy right now. So Where's for this, the uh, air check at? I'm going to blow out that tail light. Get some of that water out of there. Ah, get here this it is. Pad prepped here. <laughs> yeah, speed up the process. Just run it. <laughs> Okay, 
So, while he's doing that, we've got Ryan Segura here saying, you suck, he must be having a bad day. Uh, we've got Grant Hawtrey. Three things you'd take on an abandoned island. Go. Three things you take on an abandoned island. Basically, you wind up stranded on an island. What three things would you have with you? Uh, gosh. That's dependent on I can find food, right? Yeah, I suppose. That's a big thing for Anthony. He has to have his own yeah. food if he can't find oh. it. Yeah, without right? that, he's done for. So I'd take a, um, a pillow. I would uh, take a knife and uh, some sort of uh, uh, towel solution, maybe like a fender defender. If you were stuck on mm. an island? If I was stuck on an island, right? What would you take? I think I would probably take hmm, a boat, a sail, and a flashlight. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, burn, Dane, so you can get off that island. Yeah, that's right. And the Well, the flashlight's one of those crazy ones where you point it at the sky and you end up you know, blinding incoming aircraft or something. Wait, so, what kind of flashlight yeah. are you bringing, Dane? <laughs> one of those crazy ones that you're not supposed to have that puts oh. out way too oh, much light. Oh, like a laser. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Oh, I mean, it's not, I not quite to the laser level, but it's one of those super powerful I LEDs. Compound yet. I'm not. I'm wiping the, you did. the you water. Wiped my oh, well, I just wiped the water off. You did. Uh, okay, here's one for you guys, since it's pretty relevant. Okay. Uh, we've got, uh, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the name, but he's asking, mainly what brand of polishes do you use slash recommend? Everything that we sell at theragcompany.com. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You can pick up such great products as Last Cut, Last Cut Plus, Rupes Uno Protect, the Koch Kemi line of polishes and compounds and uh what else do we have there i think that's it those, those cut, are the good ones now I, cut plus i'm gonna Uno protect and the coach chemi line that's it yeah and i'm Take gonna point out them. they're great because levi's absolutely right we do recommend the ones we carry and i know that sounds like a very shilly thing to say but at the end of the day There's i know you're we thinking carry oh because they we work. carry them because the guys actually test them, vouch for them, and then we decide to carry them as a result. Yeah. That's like the right way now, the process Anthony, works. Anthony, what are you using? Just Last Cut? I'm using my go-to, the Last Cut compound. Oh, look how much Basically clarity you're getting out of that. My favorite. Just in that short amount of time. Yeah, that wow. looks... Uh, I think the yellowing is, is itself is, is deeper than uh, this is necessarily going to need to go, but you're getting a lot more clarity. You're getting rid of that cloudiness. Very nice. So, no, that like looks it. nice. Yeah, no, the hybrid's working for it. I think that I'd, I'd, I'd be able to buzz through it faster with the 75, but I'll keep up. I'll keep it going because I'm too lazy to pull all the stuff for the other machine. So where did well, that, that blowgun go? Right behind you. The really? hybrid is nice for the curvature of that light because it's got a lot of different angles to it. So having the hybrid just means you can work around the areas faster. Ooh. Or at least be more agile about it. I know the 75 would be actually pretty quick but uh, it would be more of a uh, blunt force object compared to this, you know, scalpel. Levi, you grabbing the 75 on the other side? Bless you. I got another one for you guys here. Okay. I got Jose Esquivel here saying, Hello, everyone. Awesome show. What do you recommend as an undercarriage dressing slash protector, like for lifted trucks where you can see shock assembly? Here's hoping he can see that. Whoa, okay, I'm here in power tools now. <laughs> Possibly. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and take a look at the comment up on the screen there. Hello, everyone. Awesome show. Like... Undercarriage dressing protector for lifted. Oh, uh, you can use Motorplast. That's a great product. Kosh Kemi yep. Motorplast. Probably a little expensive to use it as a undercarriage dressing. Um, most tire dressings will work too. Like uh, actually, um, the uh, Woolo's Tire Store. Spray that. Wipe it down. Looks good. Probably make sure I clean and make sure the uh, undercarriage is looking sharp before we do that. But okay. Good advice. And then we've got Paul here saying, you guys are awesome. Thank you for the great products and advice. Well, Paul, that's You're why welcome. we do this. 
we always want to try and put the best you know advice we can out there and uh hopefully people follow it and realize hey that's good advice <laughs> yeah that's right good advice dane okay we've got i'm not sure um, what grant hotry saying pad here. here for right now <laughs> what's up dane sorry oh no it's okay grant hotry just says we'll make it two detail products and a drink I'm not sure what he's replying to there, but nice. I'm going to Trains of Finland. Grant, you you always, uh, you know, you got a seat at the table here. Uh, we've got Trains of Finland asking, what kind of wash mitt, wash pad, etc., would you recommend? I need Lost you, Dane. a new Can't one. Can't hear you. Okay, so Trains of Finland wants to know what wash mitt or wash pad would you recommend? He needs a new one. Couldn't hear you. What? Go ahead and take a look up at the screen there. Uh, okay. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying my headset keeps kicking out when I pass. Yeah. So what kind of wash mitt, wash pad would you recommend? I need a new one. The new Cyclone is perfect for that. So the Cyclone mitt or wash pad is wonderful. <laughs> Six by eight or even the 10X if you'd like. Dane, it's going to get loud in here, so get ready. Oh, I know. I know. Seems like that's what people are excited about, though. The view count started going up the second you guys started washing and polishing. <laughs> Just jam it in there. Stick it in. All right, so I've got Final Touch Auto Detailing LLC here saying, that's pretty awesome, putting on an entire detail for everyone. Thanks, Final Touch. Hey, you guys ready to see something cool? These things drink air like crazy. I like that you're testing this live right now for the first time. <laughs> oh, man. Is he? Oh, he's going for the air tools for real. Wow. Okay. Yeah, these things drink up a lot of air. I I don't know if you guys are aware of how these Rupa's air tools work. They're something else. We can cut over to the natural sound there a little bit. It does sound like a dentist drill, I must say. Well, while he's doing that, I got a question here that I can ask Nick, actually, who's in the control room. He's asking, what lamps and lighting are you using behind you? So he wants to know about the lights we got up on the stand. So we've got ICANN Lyra's, and what was the second one? Quasar Science Crossfades. So, uh, yeah, those are the tube lights. So they're Quasar tube lights, and then the ICANs are the LED panels, which are diffused. Uh, soft lights, if you will. And they're extremely nice to have around the studio, but honestly, they're, they're pretty overkill if you're thinking of putting anything like that into a shop setting. It's just we kind of need them for having... A lot of video equipment, things like that. We need to be able to have lights that'll work with the refresh rate, the frequencies, that kind of stuff with digital video. So it's kind of a necessity in our case, but it doesn't have to be in a detail Ooh. shop. All right, let's cut back to the audio and the guys. What do you think about that, Dane? That was fun. I think a lot of people were curious about that. <laughs> this is the LHR 75, but pneumatic. <laughs> it sounds nuts. So... You gotta have the right amount of air pressure to run it. It does like to drink a lot of air, uh, but it sounds cool. That's probably the best part about it. Oh. Look and you gotta well. learn how to handle the trigger a little bit. I got a little splatter. <laughs> Feather the throttle, there you go. Yeah. How's it going over <laughs> there, Anthony? It's going okay. <laughs> Chris D. Giovanni has a good point. My teeth hurt watching the air tools at this audio compression. 
Chris, I feel you, but I know there's some people at home who are curious what those tools sound like. So I did want to capture a little bit of the Nat sound just so you get an idea. But uh, yeah, no, it's more or less like being at a dentist's office, as uh, Nick in the control room so helpfully pointed out. Uh, and while those guys are doing that, I've got Ryan Suderman here asking, would you recommend washing wash mitts as you would microfiber rags or just rinse it out after every use? Well, in this case, Ryan, I would say you could probably rinse out the uh, wash mitt with every use. You could just run it through some cold, hot water, depending on what you're comfortable with, and just get you know soap or rinseless wash, whatever you got in it, out. Um, assuming it didn't touch any sealants or anything like that, you should be okay at that point. If you find that your wash mitt starts to get gummed up over time, either it gets a bunch of debris, stuff like that in there, whatever the case, then, yeah, you want to run it through a wash, and uh, vinegar can be very helpful at kind of supercharging your regular microfiber washes. So white distilled vinegar, that's a, a careful uh, point you want to make, is that it's white distilled vinegar. <laughs> oh, here's a good one. We've got Jay saying, I applied CSL to my 2013 Focus ST. Polishing these cars are awful. Terrible panels to work with. So uh, I think he's just expressing uh, pain at watching Terrible panels, car. he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll say this, uh, the angles on this taillight are not fun. Um, yeah. However, that tool is quite possibly probably the best one, the one Anthony's using, the Nano. I think that's oh, probably your great. best bet if you are going to be doing these headlights because there's an edge here. Uh, Jimmy, did you reseal these at one point? Okay. <laughs> I can see that. Also, there's some gassing inside here uh, that's kind of changed. Probably need to pull that all off and repolish the inside or just get new taillights. But, but right here and here, you know, even though we polished it, that's on the inside um, yeah. of the taillight. There's a little gas or a little like discoloration. But all in all, not too bad. This thing cleaned up quick. I'm gonna, that, uh, uh, yeah, polisher. no, that's nice. You figure that's I'm probably gonna, from sun do damage, little, right? I did a little Uno Protect. Okay. So it's my little Uno I protect. think my taillight looks better than yours. I think it will. That's a good comparison. Keep in oh, mind, here I have what, a in. third of the power that you have. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. It looks... Is it the law? Pretty large? clean. Pretty clean. Yellowing has gone down a bit, but we know that the yellowing is pretty much buried oh, deep in there. Walk so back that's and forth. I haven't even away. put anything on mine yet. But the cloudiness is gone. Basically. I would say, I would say yours is probably maybe what ten to twenty percent better. A little bit, but but, but, not, bit but not as much as you would think it no, would be. For, no, no, you did for, a great, yeah. For still that we're mm. working the hybrid. I mean. I don't know. I, I like the look of it. It definitely looks way better than it did before. Definitely does look way better. Way better. Wow. Actually, yeah. No, Levi's side, that looks that looks really good on you camera. You like that, Dane? Yeah. No, that <laughs> looks great on camera. Yeah. Anthony, you want to do a quick pass with this bad boy? Nah, I'm okay. Right. I've, I've used that plenty of times <laughs> with more air. I was spoiled. It worked just fine with dead, the air that dead. we had. It yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. All right, I got Mike here with a question. Okay. Vinegar versus m dedicated microfiber cleaner. <laughs> uh, uh, hmm. No, it's not. Vinegar is not a dedicated microfiber cleaner. You, You're saying uh, versus. <laughs> oh, versus. I thought it yeah. said is. So uh, versus a dedicated. So two things. Vinegar is very acidic. You still need to use a soap to Reason break down and actually thing. launder and contain yeah. and pull the dirt and grime and dust and stuff out of your towels. Vinegar is great to break the sealants that are stuck in the towels. That makes sense. So I usually say microfiber cleaner, dedicated microfiber cleaner is the best bet. Then move uh, by using your final rinse, add the vinegar in the bleach cycle or the bleach tray so it goes in during the rinse cycle. That's your best bet. Nice. Okay. No, that's a good point. Mm. Uh, oh, we got Mickey asking Dana, about the lift. Dane, I'm almost done lift. with this bang. <laughs> you must be feeling supercharged right now. I feel just fine. Uh, <laughs> is the twin bush lift? And if so, how do you guys oh, actually, like it? Yeah. It's a good Can lift. It's a nice lift. Uh, it doesn't um, 
have any issues so far. We will say we found it a little more difficult with certain types of vehicles on uh, how it is, uh, how we situate a car on it. That's probably our biggest problem. We may need to get some more of these uh, rubber blocks just so that we don't have to deal with that anymore. You know, there's little blocks under here. It's mostly that. It's mostly the option of yeah. being able to find the right lift points for different types of vehicles. We, are, we deal with a lot work, of... Yeah. We deal with a lot of low cars where uh, longer ramps at the ends would be beneficial mm -hmm. um, just for getting a vehicle on there. I know. Well, say, the hard like part is Matt, Twinbush is always out of those big ramps. So Yeah, I was going to say, Matt over at OG, he's got them on his, and it seems to work pretty good for that. Um, but in our case, like the limitations we run into have more to do with just the design of having the two large planks to begin with, like other types of lifts would be more useful in certain situations where you have like the kind of pinpoint style. Yeah. With a two post. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I got trains of Finland here. Now he's getting into polishing. What Rupa's polisher slash kit do you recommend? My budget is five to six hundred dollars. Uh, I would start with an LHR uh, 15 Mark three kit. That'll fit right in that five hundred to six hundred dollar range. Okay. Get the deluxe kit. It comes with pads, polishes, usually a bag. Um, that's going to be your best best bet. All right, and then we got a friend of the show, Grissa here, saying love real time. Thanks. Thanks, Grissa. Uh, and then we got Jay here talking more about his experience working on a Focus. I ultimately use my 12 millimeter for the card. Those taillights etch very easily, though. Just a warning. Well, in this case, Jay, uh, those taillights are some. Uh, I don't want to call out Jimmy here. There's some cheap aftermarket taillights. I'm sure they weren't they're cheap. They're not cheap. They got LEDs they're... in them. <laughs> well, I've seen some cheap LEDs in my day. What are those taillights run? About 200 bucks. They're probably in that neighborhood. 300, Dane. That's not okay. cheap. Okay. That's that's not cheap, but they did seem to yellow pretty easily with some time out in the sun. So they're not OEM spec. Then again, most things aren't. Oh, Anthony's busting out his, uh, his okay. torque solution package. <laughs> I got like another one out here. Kia looks possessor. like a real mechanic. It's like a mechanic right now, actually. Seriously. <laughs> Kia Possessor says, what can I put on my headlight lens and rear taillight lens to protect um, them? I'm just tightening. PPF, uh, dude. Just yeah. It's too PPF. Getting him snug right now. Yeah, we Seriously. use Beatmaker as like a short term thing, but PPF is really good as a long term. Honestly, yeah, solution. suffocate him in PPF. That's the best thing you could do. Because if uh, air can't get to them, they're not yeah. going to oxidize. And if anything ever happens, you peel off the PPF and you put a new set on and it's fresh underneath. So you don't have yep. to go through all the work of, you know, polishing, fixing it up again. That's a lot easier than necessarily dealing with a coating or a sealant or something like that. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, we've got Grant Hawtrey here. Anthony, come to New Zealand and help me with my R33 GTR. I would. I would. <laughs> I think that would be a... Oh. Oh. <laughs> Way to go, champ. <laughs> Somebody didn't Don't lock it down. Don't let me help you with your R34 G R33 GTR. Well, How I'm glad to see the wheel is doing what <laughs> the wheel was designed it tipped, to do. It, <laughs> just tipped. it just tipped over. Flip, flip that, Jimmy. Make sure it's okay. So this is it the beauty scratched, uh, of the back of life. this wheel. No, it didn't really. Yeah. <laughs> Little red mark on there, Jimmy. Oh, no. Don't buy this, uh, don't buy this wheel rack. It's, it's nothing but bad No, news. just don't have it angled just when you pull angled. the wheels off. Correct. <laughs> you put some real weight up there. This is rear here. Let me see if I can get that out. Thank God it wasn't the Meisters, right? <laughs> well, it landed on the tire. I mean, that's about as safe a way yeah, as no, we got pretty lucky. Yeah, we're you all could right. possibly get. So I got Rick Kolb here asking, <laughs> I'm looking to change up my current microfiber towels. What packages do you recommend? What packages? Yeah. So uh, if you want, get one of the gold packs or one of the uh, platinum kits. And uh, go on the website and look at some of our kits. Pick those guys up. And uh, that'll give you a ton of different options to play with. And then once you have the one that you want, then just get that. That's all you got to do. Okay. 
And uh, since we're kind of running into a break in the comments here briefly, I want to ask you guys watching, what uh, we're, we're trying to do something a little different every time, so what would you guys like to see? Let's put that out there to people. We have, you know, certain cars we can choose from based on availability, but it's easier when it's one of the employees' cars because then we can take it aside for as much time as we need. But, yeah, uh, yeah figure out uh, what kind of detail or specific detail project we ought to do for the next live. Uh, then we just have Grant Hawtrey over here screaming taxi. Uh, <laughs> oh, Grant says he chooses Dane instead. He retracts oh, okay. his previous statement. Well, that's I, nice of him. I guess it maybe has something to do with uh, tipping over racks or something. I, I couldn't say for sure. Uh, we've got Ryan Suderman here saying, when using Beadmaker as a glass cleaner, would you use a waffle weave towel or is waffle weave best with a glass cleaner? Using what? Beadmaker as a glass cleaner? Yeah, but waffle he wants weave. to know if a waffle weave towel is the right move. Yes, waffle weave on glass is a great idea. Yeah. Okay, and Trains of Finland back at it again. What ceramic coat do you recommend? Planning to put one on our new car, looking for long durability and high water repellency. Easy application is not as important. Trains of Finland, if you're in the U in the EU, um, I try and recommend picking up uh, G Technic uh, hmm. products. Uh, if you're here in the U.S., I'd say G Technic, obviously, but. Um, Inspiration is a really strong, and the Inspiration yeah. family of coatings from PNS is awesome as well. Very easy, very simple, uh, and very strong and durable. It's one of the most one of my favorite coatings. However, uh, I really love the gloss and slickness that you get from CSL XO Combo <sighs> on G Technic. Okay. Yeah. And the G Technic line is available in Europe, where S Inspiration uh, from PNS is. Still getting its uh, customs or uh, SDS declarations in order. So, Where did I okay, put those should out? be available shortly, but not right now. And we've got AJ here asking for a comparison. What's a better wheel cleaner, Brake Buster or Wowo's Clean Wheel? Well, if you skip to the beginning of the video, actually, we show some pretty good comparison between Brake Each Buster different. and Magic Wheel Cleaner. Yeah, they're all different. Again, yeah. different pHs. So they act completely differently on different wheels. And a lot of people need to understand that. The pH yeah. is what's the, what, what you're looking for because that's the way it's going to clean. And so you always want to do learn about those first before you just pick a wheel cleaner and go, ah, oh, it doesn't work as well. Yeah. So in the case of Brake Buster, the real good answer for why you'd want to use Brake Buster is because you want a product that you can do both the wheel and the tire with. That's going to that's gonna take you a lot further if you're kind of in a hurry and you want to get stuff done. Uh, the Brake Buster would be a really good solution for just kind of getting the whole thing and getting it nice and clean, moving on from there. If you choose something more like Bobo's Clean Wheel or, say, like a Magic Wheel Cleaner or something like that, you're looking at more the acid side of the spectrum. Now, in the case of Bobo's Clean Wheel, it's not actually acid. Yeah. It's just an acid replacement. But the point remains it's on that end of the pH scale. So you're going to have a different reaction from the actual surface you're putting it on and it's not necessarily going to be as good on tires and stuff it's going to be for your wheels yeah so yeah that's that's going to kind of be the the difference there that you're looking at but yeah go check out the earlier part in this video where they actually use them and compare them uh, i think it'll give you a much better idea of what to expect i recommend agitating on whatever you use yeah agitation will help it increase the cleaning ability just make no sure you're using a just a spray on wipe off or wash off wheel cleaner, um, especially on a dirty wheel. Yeah, just make sure you're using a brush that's safe on the surface of your wheel. Yeah. So if you have more of a delicate painted wheel or something like that, just you know be careful. So I've got Andrew Oxenrider here. Just bought a foam sprayer for wheel and tire cleaning. Ten to one ratio for Brake Buster? Question mark. We actually use Brake Buster straight. Yeah, straight brake buster is what we use today. Mm hmm And then I've got Final Touch Auto Detailing LLC asking, how about a tips and trick? Getting into tight spaces like small cars, sports and exotic cars are harder, 
as the workspace is harder to get into than a truck or a minivan. Now, are you talking tight spaces like like how wheel to wells sit in the how wheels? To, no, how to fit your body into a tiny car. Oh, dang. just actually physically fitting yourself yeah. in it. Well, it probably, don't ask me. How to, <laughs> how to physically shove your body into a tight space. That's what That's it's different. about. That's different. Levi's um, done a lot of that. So, yeah. So my little brother used to work for me, and he was uh, 6'6", and... He was a big boy, uh, six seven, I think. Oh, and, gotcha. Okay, sorry, you know, my mistake. He worked for he worked for me, and he was uh, that was hard for him to get into cars. Um, so a lot of it meant like you know, we'd get stools and things that he could sit outside the car, work on the door panels, and I'd usually pair him with a smaller guy about Jimmy's size uh, to get into the interior and actually get in more in the scrubbing. Um, so if you're a big feller and you need a, need someone a little smaller, hire somebody that's a little smaller. They can climb into spots for you. Maybe you work on the outside, you put them on the interior. Uh, that's always a good mix. Um, you know, it is a, it's just one of those things, man. So. Okay, so I wanted to issue a correction because that's where I said, oh, sorry, it got mixed up. Uh, Andrew Oxenrider asking about he got a foam sprayer, and he was asking the 10 to 1 ratio for Brake Buster. Yes, yes. That would be okay in a foamer. That's that's for purposes of foam. You don't want to use it straight if you're trying to foam necessarily. You'll get a better result if you offer a little bit of a dilution. So, yes, if you're using it to foam, then a dilution makes sense. But otherwise, just use it straight in most cases. Then we've got... Hi guys, do you think detailing is becoming more eco-friendly? Ask the appropriately named Eco Green Detail. Yes, I do. Yeah. And then we've got AJ here. I also noticed my towels get clogged and repel water after several uses of bead maker, even after washing with Micro Restore. Should I use something stronger than an APC to unclog it? Uh, wait about 13 days. Yeah, so uh, Anthony's we've working got, on a potion. We've he's got been, a little uh, something cooked up. He's got a little, little bit of frog's breath. He's added uh, an eye of newt. He's added uh, some <laughs> of uh, some things here and there. Uh, he's been working with his coven to uh, create some sort of uh, you know witch's brew. We're calling it the necromancer towel solution. Um, but We've had really great success removing bead maker specifically and other sealants from towels, revitalizing them. So stay tuned. And if you are really wondering, Dane, isn't there some live uh, links that they can go to and, <laughs> and mark to make sure that they don't miss it? Yeah. So I'm going to put out a recommendation to everybody watching, listening right now. If you're watching, you probably enjoy us doing our live detailing sessions like this. So you would probably enjoy more live detailing demos, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. If you look at our upcoming live events on the Rag Company YouTube channel, you can actually see some placeholders where I have, like it says, day one, day two, day three. Um, and they're kind of red and blue. You'll, you'll see them if you look there near the top of the page. At any rate, those are the actual streams that'll be happening on those days. So they're broken into a morning slot and an afternoon slot. Each of them will be about two hours long, and uh, that is where you will go when we start running our Rag Company Media Access Show. And, uh, yeah, so you can find out more information about that by actually going, I'm going to add a pinned comment to each of those, where we have a Facebook page that shows a breakdown with a schedule and who will be coming. It's going to be a whole detailing event here held for four days right here in the studio and we're going to have people from all around either beamed in or even showing up here to do demos uh from companies you know and like so yeah. if you're kind of in the rag company orbit you'll recognize a lot of these people including uh i think we're even getting koenig wheels and some other folks in there it'll be really fun to uh see everybody there but anyway, a lot of the rag company team, the friends, cast cavalcade of characters. Yeah, so we kind of have our rogues gallery of uh, folks we like. So there will be that, and of course, you will get to find out what Anthony over here has had stewing for months and months. Uh, I think it'll be ready. Mm, I don't want to say it'll be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You know, you don't know exactly, but it'll pop up on one of those days. Just saying. So if you're running that trouble with your towels, tune into that. You will not be disappointed. 
And, uh, yeah, for more information on that, you can go to trcma.com. Uh, we'll be having a website coming up there in the next day or two. It should be going live, but there is kind of a, a simplified version of the website there. In the meantime, we can get some basic information, including the trailer that kind of explains what the whole show is about with Levi talking to uh, the camera there. So, at <laughs> any rate, I'll go ahead and see what other comments we've got that rolled in. Let's see. Oh, Trains of Finland. He says he's 14 and he's making his own detailing company. Any tips? Awesome, dude. That's awesome. That's 15. great. Yeah. Oh, 14. Um, that, 14. That's really cool, though. So one thing you can do is uh, go to your neighborhood and maybe go door to door. Talk to your neighbors. Maybe make up a little flyer or something. Go door to door. Tell your neighbors exactly what you're doing. Say, hey, I'm looking to start a little detailing company. Maybe you only do it on the evenings and the weekends. Um, that's something you can uh, work on. But go to, your, go to your neighbors, maybe hand them a flyer, literally go around your neighborhood and just say, look, I'm taking some uh, appointments and you know, start small. Start with something as simple as like washes and, and wax and things like that, or like a quick interior and just a wash, right? So start with that. Then, uh, but what your goal is, you're going to hopefully set up some appointments. You're going to set it up so that you can do some washes and say maybe you're doing $40 a wash, right? 40 bucks a wash, you're going to get them in the, get them in there. You're going to have customers that are going to be able to uh, get into getting their car cleaned and you'll have customers that will be built there. Then you can offer your customers additional services. Let's say you have four or five people that you wash that weekend. Maybe the next weekend you have another four or five or you start getting maybe 10 or 12. Point is, that's a very simple, easy way. The other thing, create a little Facebook page for your business. That's yeah. something you can do that's free. Very simple, very easy. So Absolutely. Oh, All right, Anthony. Great. Well, this has been fun, guys. <laughs> By fun, I mean Looking it, a little it, tired. Was, it was manual <laughs> labor. But it was a lot of fun. It was, it was good. I it feel was, uh, good. energized and ready to rock and roll. Yeah, you, got a, and you got a bang. My yeah, heart's that beating bang pretty some fast. Of the work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Palpitations. Starting right? to get sweaty. That's good, that's right? My arm hurts. I think that's you're having a heart attack. These weak arms are heavy. Okay. Levi. <laughs> My right arm's like... Yeah. It's your left arm, actually. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. So, <laughs> cool, guys. Well, hey, this has been a blast. We had a lot of fun. Hopefully, you guys learned something new. Um, honestly, I think the Magic Wheel Cleaner from Coach Kemi yeah. uh, lives up to its name. It really is a killer wheel cleaner. I mean, We're going to have that soon. It's, it's, it's yeah. I was going to say, I'm going to pop up the last comment we'll answer here, which is tied to that. Will okay. you guys stock up on more products from Coach Kemi like... Magic Absolutely. Wheel Cleaner or Green yes. Star. Absolutely. Well, and those of you that are wondering, we've been talking about that. Kosh has been bringing products in waves to the U.S., yeah. right? So one of the next products to actually hit our uh, storefront is going to be Magic Wheel Cleaner and actually Green Star. Green Star. We're super excited because yeah. we're going to be able to clean the floor finally. Well, yeah. and Green Star, you plan. used that in the Wash Wednesday that came out this morning. Yeah, we yeah, did. We no, did use actually, it. We did, yeah. So uh, go and check that out, guys. But, yeah, this has been fun. Check out the new Wash Wednesday. Uh, check out the Master of Shine at Home podcast. Oh, you didn't have to um, do that, oh, but thank oh, you. Sorry. I appreciate that. Well, you were going to do it, so I was <laughs> going to do it. I'm kidding. Check out the Rag Company podcast. Check out our other channels. Um, and, yeah, guys, this will probably be the last live until uh, tomorrow. But uh, if well, Tomorrow is Q&A Thursday. Correct. But if we don't see you, then we hope you have a safe and happy Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. So, guys, thank you so much for... Uh, putting up with my suggestions on what to do. You guys course, did a great man. job. People really enjoyed watching, and we had some great questions along the way. I think we met some new faces who might be regulars in the future, so that's pretty fun. Hopefully, yeah. But at uh, any rate, guys, thanks a lot for watching. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the Rag Company YouTube channel. We really appreciate that. In addition to this channel, we also have a podcast channel and a Frequently Asked mm -hmm. Questions channel where we suggest people go if they're ever looking for quick answers to stuff or they just want to hear us all, you know, shoot the breeze, talk for a while. There's a lot of interesting stuff. But the two different flavors of channel in addition to our regular Rag Company YouTube channel. And, of like course, it. if you've been watching on other platforms such as Facebook or Twitch, we thank you for that. And uh, just want to make you aware that we are available on multiple platforms when we stream. So with all that said, guys, till tomorrow when we do Q&A Thursday with a special guest. We'll see you later. See ya. See ya.
Hey guys, Levi for The Rag Company, and in today's FAQ video, I'm gonna tell you about something even greater than the FAQ channel. This is gonna be a four-day, basically, FAQ event. That's right, from November 10th through November 13th, four hours a day for four days, two sessions a day morning, afternoon, we are inviting some of the greatest from the detailing industry right here to our studio. And you guys will be able to ask any of the questions that you want. Why? Because we will have a live chat going on and we will be having a Zoom call going on. So for those of you that wanna ask a couple questions, we will have representatives in the live chat answering those questions. For those of you that maybe just wanna watch, you can just watch. You can literally just sit and watch the show and hopefully you will learn something new and exciting about that brand. Now, if you wanna learn more about the product, maybe you wanna go a little deeper, that's where you pop onto that Zoom call with one of their representatives and you'll be able to discuss and maybe become a distributor or reseller or something like that yourself. Now, one of the great things about this event is the access you are gonna be able to get with these folks. Maybe you wanna watch Chris West and you wanna ask him some questions, you can do that. Maybe you wanna learn more about G-Technic products, you can ask Eric himself. Maybe you wanna learn a little bit more about Rupes or Coach Chemi. You can do that too, that's the greatest thing. We're even gonna be beaming in the guys from Color Lock and IK Sprayers from on the other side of the world. That's the even cooler part. And you'll be able to get the same access that we get on your computer. How awesome is that? So head on over to the Rag Company YouTube channel because that's where it's going to be happening. Where you see all the videos, the little placeholders up there, it says day one, day two, day three, day four. Set a reminder for yourself. That way you'll be notified right when we start to go live and you'll be able to not miss a single moment. So we'll see you Tuesday, November 10th, and hopefully we see you through the whole thing at the Rag Company Media Access Show on the Rag Company YouTube channel.